The Alpha Shifter Written by Amelia Shaw Chapter 1 Logan The sun was setting over the city, falling from the sky and bringing with it the darkness that signaled rest, but I was not going to be able to sleep tonight. My shifters were restless. I could feel the heat rising up my back, making my spine tingle and burn. I need a drink. It's the only thing that quiets them down. Work had finished and I was standing on the street, watching the guys pack up. Going home to their families, their kids, their pets. Not me. I raised my hand and waved goodbye to the crew on the building site, all of whom had pulled at least three hours overtime tonight. Again. Night guys. I called out. They chorused back and continued to pack up their pickups and cars. Their transport to get home. I however didn't have a vehicle standing by to take me home. I didn't drive unless I had to, and since my place wasn't too far away from the current building site, I'd made my own way this morning. And I was walking home again. Not far was relative of course. It was at least 20 blocks to my rundown shack, and after a full day of building houses, the guys on site thought I was crazy to want the extra exercise. They were all going home to put their feet up, and probably fall asleep in front of the TV. But for me, the walk was nothing. My shifter genes gave me an unending supply of energy and strength. In fact, I preferred to walk. Running would have been better, but that would have attracted too much unnecessary attention since I was still in my work clothes. I also didn't want to take a risk and shift in a populated area. I never knew who was out and who was watching. If someone saw me, I didn't know what would happen. And yet, the prospect of running in my animal form was too much to resist. The bite of the night air against my fur, the sense that tickled my snout. Everything I saw became clearer while I was in wolf form. It made me feel alive and helped me to see the world around me differently, more deeply. I turned the corner of the first city block and headed home. The city was quiet and somewhat empty. Parked cars littered the street, and small businesses were turning off the lights and locking the doors. Street lights above flickered, causing shadows on the concrete to dance and twitch. There was a sense of peace in this city, something that made me feel comfortable and safe. Out of nowhere, a tingle of awareness shot up my spine. I knew that feeling all too well. That sense of peace that had just washed over me vanished, replaced with trepidation. No, it can't be. Who would be following me? Being what I was left room for threats against me, if someone discovered my true self. I had always been extra careful, and I didn't trust anyone with that information. The real question I should be asking myself was, who found out about me and had the balls to follow me? I crossed the road and glanced ahead, the dirty city streets stretching out for miles. I lived on the outskirts of the city, past the skyrise apartment blocks and busy streets. It wasn't exactly paradise, but it worked. The fact that it was close to work and gave me the freedom to walk to and from the construction site was enough for me. I never cared about fancy things or a big spacious place to live. Since it was only me, I didn't see the need. Anything bigger than a single bedroom house was frivolous. There was land around the house, which was the most important thing to me. Space to move. Air to breathe. Privacy from nosy neighbors who might see a wolf running around the yard on the days I couldn't control my shifter any longer. I couldn't think of anything worse than living in a small apartment, jammed into a building with a thousand other people. Like a large sardine can. For a man like me, a loner, a shifter, someone with a touch of claustrophobia, the space around my home was more of a necessity than the house itself. I could sleep in the dirt for all I cared. As long as I was safe. As long as I had my freedom, I would put up with anything. I kept walking, fighting the urge to look over my shoulder again. I still had that niggling feeling I was being followed. The skin on the back of my neck crawled with tightness and cold. My senses became heightened as my shifter senses stepped up to deal with the situation. The sounds became louder and the smells of the city intensified as I searched for more clues to this feeling. I honed in on anything I might be able to pick up that would help me figure this out. 
loud dirty cars flew past me as people went about their business. To work home. This city was always crazy busy, it didn't matter what time of the day or night it was. Sleep was for the weak. I felt that tingle on my neck, the feeling I got when someone was following me, but stronger this time. I was forced to stop moving, and I tilted my head up, searching. My skin shivered with nervous energy. I hadn't gotten this far by not following my instincts. They'd kept me alive more times than I could count. I turned my head and glanced over my shoulder. I had to. There was someone there, I was sure of it. So, I narrowed my eyes, but I couldn't see anyone suspicious. I flared my nostrils, trying to pick up a scent. Again nothing. A normal-looking guy in a suit sat in his car talking on his cell. Businessman probably. A woman pushing a stroller who looked like she was pregnant again, a gentle smile on her face as though she didn't have a care in the world. Neither of them looked capable of taking me down, nor would they want to. When I gazed at them, I didn't get any sense of urgency. Why do still I get the feeling I'm being followed? I pushed my legs to walk a little faster. I didn't want to give myself away, I didn't want whoever my pursuer was to know I was on to them. Perhaps they were something other than human. There were a lot of paranormals that could easily disguise themselves in a busy street like this, but normally my acute senses would be able to detect them. Normally. My heart began to pound harder, adrenaline streaking through my veins. I wasn't afraid of confrontation, quite the opposite. I could take on any guy my size, two of them, if I needed to. There weren't many guys weighing 280 that were as fit as I was. However, the possibility was always there, hanging on my shoulder like a shadow that wouldn't disappear, even in the light. The problem wasn't the fight, it was the fact that I didn't want anyone to see me taking out whoever was following me. I didn't like drawing attention to myself. And I'd managed to stay hidden in this town for years now. I'd enjoyed having some sort of permanent home, and that was rare for a shifter like me. The tingles increased, the hairs on my arms standing on end. I was right. Someone was following me. Damn it. There was someone on my tail. Hunting me in fact. Like I was some kind of prey. And they were closing in fast. I could feel it in all my advanced senses. I almost laughed. The thought that anyone could mistake me as prey was hilarious. They didn't know what was coming to them when I figured out who they were and where they were hiding. The sound of someone running hit my hearing, the heat of attack in the air. Good. Let them come. Let's get this over with. Hopefully, we could take care of business somewhere in private so there wouldn't be any witnesses. I glanced around. I still couldn't see anyone, but that didn't mean there wasn't someone there. Quite the opposite. The sun was down and the night was full of the paranormal. Unfortunately, I knew by past experience that vampires loved my shifter blood. I had the scars to prove it. My fingers curled into fists as I slid sideways into an alley, intense to take on whoever was on the street, hunting me. I clenched my teeth to keep my growl to myself. I shook my head of the thoughts and kept my eyes on the entrance of the alley. A couple of college girls laughed as they walked by on the sidewalk, attacking the silence with their chatter and guile. They didn't even look my way, too distracted by whatever topic of conversation they were both engaged in. Hopefully nobody sees me do this. The scent of a shifter filled my nose, though I couldn't tell which sort. I furrowed my brow. Picking up a hint of another shifter was unusual, but not something I had time to dwell on now. My vision changed to night mode. I could see better now that the sun had dropped, but thanks to my wolf eyes, I could only see in black and white. Doesn't matter. I didn't need to see in color to strike when I need to. I sensed my stalker approach. The tingling grew more intense, like a car alarm going off in my mind. Without warning, I leaped onto the sidewalk and grabbed the guy by the back of the neck. I threw him to the concrete. He rolled onto his back with the speed of a big cat. I jumped on the guy's stomach and straddled him, lifting my fist to smash him in the face if they said the wrong thing. I did plan to hurt him, but I wanted information first. 
Why are you following me? I yelled down at him before I realized what I was looking at. Or who I was looking at. Beneath me wasn't a guy at all. It's a woman. I blinked. I should not have been surprised. I had met many women, human and paranormal, that were all strong, mentally and physically. But none had decided to follow me, to hunt me. I relaxed my arms, my eyes shifting back to human. My gaze focused on her face and color came back into my world. The woman beneath me was not just any woman. She was a shifter, for one thing. Not a mere human. But she was also spectacularly beautiful, with long black hair spread out around her, bright green eyes and perfect clear skin that made me sigh with desire. She smelled like the wilderness, like freedom and rain, cold air and trees. It was the sort of scent I picked up whenever I ran through the woods near my home. I had to refrain from leaning forward and taking a deeper breath. Besides the fact that would be creepy and invade her personal space, it would distract me from figuring out why she was following me in the first place. She smiled and grunted as she kicked me off her with a huge push and thrust of her hips. I fell backwards as she pushed me and rolled over the path. I staggered to my feet as she did the same thing, but with grace. I couldn't tell what sort of shifter she was yet, which was strange. It should be obvious to me. It usually was. A bear would move like a bear and smell like a bear. She wasn't a bear. Not with those almost feline reflexes. But she definitely didn't smell like a cat, either. A wolf wouldn't move like that, would they? She lifted her hands and went into a fighting stance. I couldn't help the thrill of adrenaline that shot through my system. Whatever she was, she was fearless, maybe to an arrogant degree, and I loved it. A dragon, maybe. I'd never met a dragon before, and I was curious to see what one might be like in person. She launched forward and kicked out at me, landing a solid blow to my thigh. I stumbled and moved away so I could regain my balance. I didn't like to think she could beat me, or even get the upper hand. I took a step back, making sure we both kept in the alley. A couple of kids dribbled a basketball nearby, despite the fact that darkness shrouded the city, and the streetlights flickered on and off until they went out completely. So she wasn't here to chat, obviously. But the last thing I wanted to do was hit a girl. Her fingers tightened into fists, and a ripple of unease shot through me. The fight had escalated, and if she was going to use almost lethal force on me, then I'd be stupid not to do the same with her. A gentleman I may be, but no point being dead. I cracked my knuckles and threw her a grin. She let out a roar. She came at me again and I blocked her punch and hit her in the gut. She spun away before I fully connected and danced around me. I would have felt guilty if she had keeled over in pain rather than dodge it like some kind of fighting pro. A laugh sounded in the alleyway and I realized it was me. It had been too long since I'd fought an opponent with any real skill. I brought both of my fists up, angling my body, ready for another chance at her. The putrid scent of garbage rotting away filled my nostrils and almost made me gag. It was easy to forget we weren't in a gym sparring together or surrounded by woodland, dirt and branches. But instead of grass, concrete was underneath me. Instead of trees, I was surrounded by brick buildings. And instead of bushes, dumpsters and trash cans lined the alley, most having spilled over. I caught scent of a stray cat going through a trash can up ahead, looking for scraps of food. I stepped forward and threw a punch at the women. I didn't want to hurt her per se, but I had to protect myself. I had a punch that could paralyze if I really wanted it to. I just needed to inhibit her enough to figure out who she was and why she was stalking me. She ducked, dodging my next punch, and weaved around metal trash cans. Her speed took me by surprise. Before I realized what she was doing, she was directly in front of me, pushing her leg between mine. What the? All of a sudden, I was flat on my back, looking up at her, and I wasn't quite sure how I'd gotten there. I blinked, letting out a grunt. The female shifter was kneeling on my arms with most of her weight, so although I could probably get out from under her, it would require using my legs to practically snap her neck, and I wasn't willing to do that. After all, she hadn't actually hurt me yet. Taken me by surprise, sure. 
Knocked me off my feet, definitely. But hurt me. She stared down at me, the green in her eyes becoming more and more vibrant. It was hard not to be captivated by those penetrating eyes. A dragon. She's definitely a dragon. Had someone sent her, or did she come to me on her own? More than that, why? I prided myself in living a life of solitude. I kept my head down and focused solely on myself and my commitments. Besides shifting in my backyard, there was nothing I did that could attract attention. I was careful. I made sure to be. She wasn't punching anymore, instead she seemed content to just look at me. What do you want? I asked my voice gruff. I did nothing to amend it, either. She ignored my question and cocked her head to the side. So it is true, she murmured to herself. My stomach dropped and my skin tingled in warning again. I didn't like the sound of that statement at all. I didn't exactly feel threatened by her, but I didn't trust her either. It was an interesting feeling. I couldn't quite put it into words. I stared up at her. What was true in regards to me? What was she talking about? Her smile said it all. She'd been looking for me, and she'd found me. But the question was, what did she want with me? Why me and not another shifter? I didn't say anything, not wanting to give a single thing away. But then she leaned her weight back so that she released my shoulders and I could move again. But she didn't get off me. She simply grinned down at me and said, I know what you are. The very last thing I wanted to hear. Years of building a quiet life, carving out a place for me in the world, all shattered in mere seconds by this beautiful dragon. I wasn't a killer, but this certainly seemed like an appropriate time to make an exception. Chapter 2 Molly I jumped up and released the hybrid from beneath me. I had to know if it was true, if someone like him truly existed, and now that I had my answer, I didn't need to continue to attack. Unless he asked for it, of course. God, he's gorgeous. So much better looking than anyone had said. There should have been some sort of warning. All throughout our confrontation, I had been distracted. I couldn't let him know that, however. I couldn't let him know he had an advantage over me. My eyes flickered over him again. I'd been hunting for him for weeks. Now that I had him, I was bringing him in. No matter what he said. No matter what he tried to do to me. The shifter named Logan stood up slowly, and I looked up at him. Quite literally. At almost six foot, I was a tall woman. More than tall, I was huge. This man, this hybrid shifter, he made me feel small, which wasn't something I had ever felt before. He was at least six foot six, with massive wrestler-style shoulders, and hands the size of dinner plates. I had confidence in my abilities to defend myself and attack, if need be, but I knew this man, this shifter, had the strength to land serious blows. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, pushing himself up. My body was still tense, could I trust him not to attack me? If he did, I couldn't blame him if he attempted to fight for his freedom. Hell I would. Instead he brushed the dirt off his overalls and flicked his dark hair out of his face. I'm just a builder, he stated, making it seem like I had lost my mind. When he made direct eye contact with me, I had to lock my knees so they didn't tremble. I hated how weak he rendered me. I didn't even have to touch him to be affected by him. All it took was one look and I was speechless. I was pathetic. He is incredibly hot. Like, super please take me to bed and fuck me three ways from Sunday's hot. I cleared my throat with a cough and straightened my shoulders. Stop getting distracted just because you're in heat. You're here to do a job. It was one thing to be attracted to someone. I could control myself if I was merely attracted to him. The fact that I was in heat, where everything was heightened and everything was enhanced, made him impossible to ignore. I, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Logan, isn't it? I'm Molly. I stuck my hand out and gave him my most charming smile. He stared at my hand for a moment. Then a reluctant smile tugged up his lips, and he took my palm with his. Molly. 
I'd like to say nice to meet you, but it isn't. His voice reminded me of thunder, low and grumbly and holding a heavy threat of a storm coming. A shiver raced down my spine, but I suppressed it. The last thing I needed was for him to know he had an effect on me and my traitorous body. He dropped his hand away from mine and began walking out of the alley and down the street. He had his hands shoved in his pockets, his shoulders loose and casual, as though he hadn't just engaged in a physical confrontation. As though it was nothing to him. I tilted my head to the side, pretending it wasn't because I enjoyed watching his body. I ignored the thrill it sent straight to my pelvis. Why he walked home from work every day, I had no idea, but I took complete advantage of it. You realize you have to take him in, right? I shook my head and sprang to my feet. I ran after him, pushing myself to keep up with his long strides. Tracking him down had been hard enough, but chasing him down the street was almost harder. Hey look! I cut him off, standing in front of him so he couldn't continue to walk away. I only need an hour of your time. He grunted, barely even looking at me. I hated how personally I took his casual dismissal. Well keep up then, he said. I walked alongside him, the dragon shifter inside me practically vibrating for joy that another dragon was within reach. I could feel it within him. The heat. The power. I'd seen it in his eyes when I had him beaten. His pupils had flicked to a dragon's eye, the black part of the eye no longer circular, but a diamond shape. Not that I thought I'd win in a truly fair fight. When he forgot that I was a woman and hit me with everything he had, I would be blown away by the sheer force of his strength. I had the advantage of surprise this time, and him being a decent guy, I'd won. For now. And what he didn't seem to grasp was that I didn't care if I had to walk for twenty blocks to talk to him. I'd scoured the whole state looking for him. I could wait another half an hour or however long it took. So we marched and didn't talk. And I didn't care. At least, I wouldn't let him know if I cared maybe a little, minuscule, insignificant bit. All that mattered was I found him. I'd found him. We finally passed the last of the city streets and arrived at a small house that was crumbling in parts. When he stepped up to the front stoop and opened the door, I couldn't hide my surprise. Why here? Of all the places in the world, why would he choose to live here in this rusted shack that was falling apart? Most dragons liked things that were shiny and new. I would have thought he'd be attracted to a building in the city or a mansion in a gated community. Not this dump. Not when there were so many other options. Come in if you're coming in, he called out, and I hurried in behind him. I ignored the fact that he must not see me as a threat if he invited me in, like it wasn't a big deal. Was I really that shit at fighting? Clearly, I needed to work on my intimidation skills. After stepping inside, I looked around. My lips tugged into a frown. The inside of the house wasn't much better than the external facade, with peeling wallpaper and a kitchen I hoped he didn't cook in. How was this place considered livable? Didn't he care at all about cleanliness? He sauntered towards the silver fridge, which looked blessedly new. You want a beer or something? he asked. Hospitable, who would have guessed? It almost put me on guard, like he was up to more than just being nice. I wasn't used to it. Ah no no thank you. I shook my head, offering a polite smile. He pulled a beer from the fridge, popped the top, and drank most of the contents in a few swallows. He didn't even seem perturbed at all. I couldn't stop staring at him. He was different in every single way than I'd expected, from his looks, to his attitude to his house, to his alcohol intake. I appreciated the fact that I couldn't easily read him. It also made me slightly wary. At least predictability made me feel like I was in control. I had been hunting him for months, and now that I had him, I felt as though he had me. What? he asked as he tossed the now empty bottle in a nearby trash can and grabbed another beer from the fridge. I blinked. I hadn't realized my staring was obvious. I dropped my eyes to the floor, some strangely colored carpet. Ah! I didn't think you'd drink, he said. 
He sipped at the new beer while leaning against old granite counter. Why not? I cocked my head to the side and stared at him. Was he baiting me, or did he really not know? He must know. Because alcohol affects your shifting ability, I said slowly, as though this was as obvious as the answer to what color the sky was or what one plus one equaled. And if you drink, like that, I indicated to the bottle in the bin that he'd drunk faster than I could finish a bottle of water, your shifter wouldn't be able to surface. He stared at me as though I was the stupid one. Exactly. Then the truth hit me and I realized I was the stupid one. I sighed. He was deliberately intoxicating his shifting animals. It probably made it easier to hide them. I'd never thought of that. I'd never heard of anyone who wanted to suppress themselves in such a way. It was his turn to stare at me. So, he nodded at me after taking another sip of his beer. Come on, Molly. Out with it. You've hunted me down for God knows what reason. What can I do for you today? Do you need a house built? I'm good with my hands. He didn't smile, but the double entendre wasn't lost on my heated body. I tensed my spine so I didn't shiver visibly in front of him. I'm sure you are very good with your hands. I shook myself hard. Nope. Thanks for the offer, but I have a house. And I did. A small but well-built home deep in the forest, away from civilization, but not so isolated that I couldn't go out myself and make contact with someone. He saluted me with his beer. Well, I'm waiting. I took a deep breath. Now that I was finally here, in front of him, the words were harder to find than I'd expected. I've been looking for you for weeks, I began. His eyebrows flew up. Why would you be looking for me? Because I'd heard there was another hybrid shifter in the state, I said. I looked down at my hands, unsure what to do with them. His response was slow. Deliberately, cunningly slow. He put his beer down and then flattened both palms against the granite counter. I took a step back at the veiled violence in the air. My dragon shifter leapt to my mind, ready to take over my body if she was needed. I swallowed. What did you say, he asked, narrowed eyes flashing to me, beer seemingly forgotten. I bit my lip. Um, which part? What did you call me? Logan corrected himself, his voice changing tone, so he was vibrating in a totally different way now. Was he angry? I cocked my head. I couldn't take the time to care now. So I pushed on. You're a hybrid, I repeated. Two shifters in one. Surely you know that, don't you? His posture relaxed a little, though I could still see the tension in his neck and shoulders. It was obvious he'd been alone for way too long. Even then, I couldn't get a read on him. I couldn't tell if he knew all along what he was or if he was trying to mask his ignorance. What sort are you? He asked. He took the beer bottle in his hand and raised to his lips. For some reason, he didn't sip. Instead, he slowly put his arm down, tilting the bottle in a way where liquid wouldn't spill out of it. I crossed my arms over my chest. The same as you. I wasn't going to say anything more. I wanted to know what he knew. His blue eyes flicked up and the wolf raised his head, the iris turning silver in front of me. And what am I exactly? he asked with that slow voice again. I rolled my eyes. Why did he play these games? Geez, you seriously don't spend any time with any other shifters, do you? I asked in a huff, because if he had, he'd know how easy it was to sniff out the type of shifter someone was. He didn't answer, but a muscle in his jaw tightened and ticked in response. I walked forward, risking bodily harm if I was interpreting his angry glares properly. You're half-wolf, half-dragon shifter, I said. I stopped directly in front of him. This was probably the worst decision I could have made because being so close to him caused my body to thrum with desire. I forced myself to continue, hoping my voice didn't shake. Same as me. One of the rarest of all the hybrid combinations. All the steam seemed to go out of him. He set down his beer, leaning forward so his shoulders hunched up, revealing just how broad and muscled they were. 
square? Us, he finally said, his voice low. I risked a smile. You couldn't tell what I was? I asked, tilting my head to the side so my hair fell over my shoulder. God, I hoped I didn't look like I was a fucking flirt. That was the last thing I needed right now. I could easily see the dragon within him. The scent of him, the size of his body. Not to mention the way his eyes changed when he was in fight mode. He was mesmerizing. He shook his head. No. I grew up in the foster system. I didn't have much exposure to other shifters. Barely none, actually. My jaw dropped, my lips making an O. Holy crap. Shit, that must have been hard. I dropped my gaze to the floor. I couldn't imagine him coming into his shifting powers as a teenager and not knowing what they were, let alone how to control them. Not having anyone to be there for him, to tell him what to expect and what was going to happen to his body. I swallowed down my sympathy. The last thing I wanted was to feel sorry for him, and I highly doubted he wanted that either. He shrugged as though it didn't matter, but I could see from the defeated posture of his shoulders that it did. Yeah, well, I burnt a house or two down when I was 15, but I've managed to control it since then, he grumbled, lifting his beer and the alcohol finally made sense. He'd spent his adult life neglecting a huge part of himself. He hadn't embraced his shifter self and shut up the voices like an alcoholic drowning out his demons. Empathy and sadness flowed through me as I looked at him in a whole new way. This time, I couldn't stop the feelings even though I balled my hands into tight fists and dug my nails into my palms. He didn't shift often by the looks of his rigid form. He probably didn't even trust his shifting animals not to hurt anyone. Now I understood the shitty shack, the isolation. He did this, all of this, on purpose because he didn't believe he was worthy of anything else and wanted to protect others. And maybe to a degree, he wanted to protect himself. I forced a smile to my lips and plowed on with my planned speech. Well, I've come with an offer, I said quickly. I rubbed my hands on my jeans, surprised by how much perspiration had accumulated. I didn't know why I was nervous. I had recited this speech plenty of times in the mirror, just in case I actually found him. I have my own hybrid pack. There's twelve of us at the moment, but with the attacks growing, we need someone like you. Strong. An alpha. You'll fit right in. I gave him my most winning smile, but he frowned in response. Okay, not a good sign. What? It almost sounded like he was in disbelief. He ran a hand along the counter, then finally looked back at me. You have a pack of misfits, and you want me to join? He shook his head. I don't think so. I flinched. That's not fair. You don't even know us. He huffed. I know you don't fit in anywhere else, so you're trying to make up your own club so you're not alone. I ignored the way the derision in his tone caused me to bristle with annoyance. What did I care what he thought about my pack? Yet, his words affected me more than I was willing to admit. Well thanks but no thanks, he said, picking up his beer. You can show yourself out. He threw the bottle at the bin and went to the fridge and pulled out a cold pizza. All shifters burn through thousands of calories in a day, and I could only imagine how much a hybrid dragon wolf, who spent his days building houses, could eat. It was the only observation I could focus on that prevented me from attacking him again. Because, unfortunately for him, despite his dismissal, I wasn't going anywhere. I refused to give up so easily, especially considering I had finally found him. I expected no. I was hoping for I, obviously, but I had considered he wouldn't be easy to convince. But I could work with no. I could turn that no into a yes. Logan was a loner. I could see that. Hell, I understood it. I used to prefer being alone. But through personal experiences, I realized that I couldn't do it all on my own. I needed help. I needed others like me. It wasn't unusual for a wolf shifter to go rogue when they didn't have a pack. Well, this guy had never had a pack, 
so it would be hard to convince him of the advantages of family when he'd never known them before, especially when he thought he was a source of destruction and pain. It isn't safe for a hybrid in the modern climate, Logan. I dropped my hands to my sides, ensuring I wasn't coming across as either demanding or aggressive. This needed to be his decision, and I highly doubted he was going to agree to something merely because I pushed him too hard. I needed to be patient. I needed to be soothing. Those weren't exactly qualities I was known for, but I still had to try. I know you don't know anything about pack politics or the shifter world, but a lot is happening out there at the moment. He stuffed some pizza in his mouth and asked between bites. Yeah, like what? It was dismissive, almost like he was humoring me. I bit back a smart retort and let out a slow breath. It wouldn't help if I bit his head off. Bad things are happening to anyone who isn't a pure breed, and no one is coming forward and owning up to the attacks, I said slowly, meeting his eyes. There are stories, whispers of wolves and dragons that attack anyone who is different. They find us a threat to the species, and they want to take us out. The fact that is was shifters hunting us was the most daunting part of all of this. Not humans, not poachers, not parabrokers who wanted to sell us as some sort of slave to the highest bidder. No. It was actual shifters. Why couldn't it be the bears? Bears were easy to take out. Bears were slow and predictable and not exactly the brightest shifter species. Bears I could handle. But it wasn't them. Logan grunted and shrugged as though he didn't care. That doesn't apply to me. He stuffed the last bit of pizza into his mouth and went back to the fridge to pull out another slice. No one knows what I am. And it's gonna stay that way. He gave me a pointed look that seemed to say if I revealed to anyone what he was, it wasn't going to be good for me. I ignored the veiled threat, though I was slightly offended he would think I would out him just to prove a point. But wouldn't you like to be part of a pack? I asked. Part of a family? Having you would help us a lot, I'm sure we could help you too. He grunted again and lifted the pizza to his lips. I doubt it. I threw my hands up in the air and groaned loudly. I was ready to rip that slice of pizza from his hands and stomp on it. What was it going to take to get through to this thick head? I wanted to scream, but I suppressed the urge. I knew deep down he needed us. I also knew that he was as stubborn as all hell. What I didn't know was how to get him to agree to come with me. And if I couldn't get him to do that, then the lives of my people and his may be forfeit. Chapter 3 Logan I kept eating the pizza, more to give me something to do with my hands than anything else. Plus, if I had food in my mouth, it would keep me from saying the things I actually wanted to say. Because the truth of the matter was, Molly's offer was tempting. I had never had a family. I never knew anyone like me before, which made it easy not to get close to people. But to hear that there was an entire pack of hybrid shifters. I wanted to meet them. I wanted to surround myself with them, as proof I wasn't alone the way I had felt my entire life. It also didn't help that she was the one who came after me. God damn it, she's sexy. All fire and passion and beautiful face. She was one of the few people that could actually keep up with me in a fight. I knew I would win in the long run, but she would make it interesting. And fun. And there was a scent about her, I couldn't deny. It called to me on a level that I'd never felt before. I wanted to grab her and bend her over the kitchen counter. It didn't help my lust when I.D. found out she was another dragon-wolf hybrid, either. It was like the universe was saying, hey, here's the perfect mate for you. She'll be able to take whatever you want to give her, and then she'll flip you over on your back and give as good as she gets. The universe had served her up on a silver platter. I started to get hard just thinking about it. A woman who could take me down in a fight and probably light my house on fire too. That image sobered me up and did a good job of dousing the flames in my groin. I felt like a teenage boy, like a goddamn kid who couldn't control himself around his hot teacher. Pathetic. When was the last time I'd gotten laid anyway? 
I couldn't remember. That must be why I was reacting to her. I wasn't looking after my own sexual needs, obviously. Yup, that was it. I finished the second slice of pizza and went back to the fridge for a third beer. I made a mental note to go to the store tomorrow and grab more. After cracking open the bottle, the silver bottle cap landing somewhere on the floor, I took a sip. Her tight lips and scrunched face said she was annoyed at me but, but surprisingly, she hadn't opened her mouth to push any more. At least not yet. I had had it rough when I'd first started shifting, and the last thing I wanted was to dive into a world with other shifters and make it worse for everyone involved, myself included. I wanted those impulses gone. Buried. I wanted to be human. A simple carpenter. Nothing more. I contemplated another beer. It usually took at least six before I could sleep at night. Six to quiet the voices in my head, the ones that urged me to shift. Look Molly, I'm not the guy you're looking for. I pointedly ignored the disappointment in her eyes and tossed the empty bottle in the trash. You obviously want someone to lead your little band of misfits to save you. And although I have to say, you are one of the hottest women I have ever met in my life. I can't come with you. I can't be the person you want me to be. I expected her to be angry at my response, but instead she glanced away as though embarrassed, her cheeks colored pink. Shit. I said too much. I swallowed against the tightening in my throat. Look. I think you better go. Her gaze swung around to mine again and connected in that way that had my shifters stirring restlessly beneath my skin. It was an uncomfortable feeling, and I didn't like it. Molly crossed her arms over her chest, pushing up her ample breasts so that her cleavage was now visible in the V of her tank top. No, she replied. The look on her face said not to even bother arguing. When she gave an answer, she meant it. There was no changing her mind. Stubborn little vixen. I opened my mouth to respond. My skin began to tingle in a warning, one I couldn't ignore. I stood up. Somebody's here. My eyes focused on the door, and she turned to face the same way. They aren't alone, either. A loud crash echoed through the house as one of the front windows broke into hundreds of pieces. A loud thump followed as a log from the front yard flew through one of the non-broken windows. Get down. I barked out as shards of glass rained down on us. I dropped to the floor and Molly ran for me, crouching down beside me. After a moment, her eyes found mine. A look passed between us. I didn't understand how we barely knew each other, and yet we had the ability to communicate without words. She seemed to understand I was asking if she was alright, I understood she was, even without a quick nod. After a moment, we picked ourselves up. I could feel the heat of her anger at being attacked, and the vibration of her power. It was both terrifying and a turn-on, all at the same time. I wasn't sure if trusting her was actually a good idea, but every instinct inside of me told me to do just that. It's them, she said. They're here for you. Then another crash sounded, and another. My head tilted, trying to follow every sound. I wanted to pick up where they were, where they would be. Anger pulsed through me as more glass splintered across my living room floor, adjacent to the room we were in. My house. I couldn't help but exclaim. I knew it wasn't anything special, quite the opposite. It was what the realtor had called, a renovator's delight. But it was mine. And I didn't want anyone destroying it. What the hell are they doing? I glanced at Molly from my peripheral. If she knew who these people were, Maybe she knew what they planned to do now that they had found me. There were smashes as they took out more windows from all sides, and the anger in my gut grew. I could feel my wolf shifter reaching up, and I pushed him down out of habit. Part of me was tempted to grab that beer and down it as fast as I could, if only to help me control the beasts within. Then these people, whoever they were, threw a tree branch through one of the broken windows, and it was on fire. They were going to burn my house down, and us along with it. Smoke filled my lungs. Tears burned my eyes. I put an arm up and leaned forward, trying to breathe in what clear air I could find. 
No, Molly said, her breathing getting faster and faster. She moved to the door, throwing an expectant look at me. What are you planning to do? Stand there like some kind of idiot. I'm not staying here to get cooked like a goose. She began removing her clothing as she moved towards the back door. Where are you going? I called, distracted by the sight of her beautiful flesh. I've got to get outside or I'll destroy the house when I shift, she said, panting as she went. Beads of sweat accumulated on her tight body, and I had to close my mouth as I gaped at her. Smoke was filling the house, but at least the windows were broken and the air from outside pulled some of the smoke away. I followed her and watched as she stumbled outside in her underwear and began to shift into the most incredibly beautiful dragon I'd ever seen, with purple scales and a tail as long as a tree. She was magnificent, regal even. She possessed a terrifying grace as she opened her mouth and let out a thunderous roar. I couldn't take my eyes off her, mesmerized by her very essence. Smoke tickled my nose, the flames inside my house snapping and cracking. I glanced away from her to the danger around my property. Men stood in a line outside in the dark, holding burning branches and axes. They stayed back, avoiding the threat of the flames, but they hadn't left. Obviously they were still searching for me, despite the risk. It appeared as though Molly's roar did nothing to deter them. If anything, it indicated I was still alive. But they didn't want me alive, I realized. This was a lynching party, and they'd come for me. A smile pulled up my lips as my heart pounded like a bongo drum inside my chest. Oh, it's on. I couldn't hold the animal back anymore, and for the first time in a long time, I didn't want to. I needed to defend my home, and these guys were just as powerful as I was. I was outnumbered. Good. This would be a challenge. I hadn't had one of those in a long time. I curled my fingers into tight fists, letting my wolf rip through me. I succumbed to the shift to save my house, and damn it, it felt good. It made me question why I had suppressed myself for so long. I needed release. I needed my freedom. I needed to stretch my legs and howl and tear into flesh. I needed to do everything I could to save my home. The men in the backyard begin to shift too, into snarling wolves that match mine in size but not color. These wolves were black, where my fur was silver. I nearly laughed at the sight. I should have realized they were shifters, especially after what Molly warned me about. I snarled and ran at them, snapping my jaws. Saliva hung out of my mouth. My eyes were narrowed and heavy. My long pointed teeth vibrated with a need to sink into something. My paws hitting the ground propelled me farther. God it felt good to run as a wolf. It felt good to hunt. One opponent jumped on my back from behind, while another ripped my leg out from under me. I roared, falling from the pain. The fangs in my flesh were still quite sharp, despite the fogginess of the alcohol clouding my mind. Then the wolf that was on top of me was lifted off my back and flung into the house. He crashed spectacularly against the doorframe and whimpered. I winced at the sight, glad that wasn't me. I looked up. Molly towered above me in her dragon form, taking out the wolves one by one with her powerful claws and stomping on the fires they'd created. The flames immediately went out. Her skin must have been so thick that even flames didn't seem to affect her. Another new wolf growled, a large silver one, near my house. I stood up and faced him. That was an alpha, I could feel it in my bones. He was bigger, more vicious, and seemed to be angrier as well. Yet, I had no desire to bow down to him. If anything, I looked forward to fighting him. There were obviously advantages in being a lone wolf, so to speak. One of them being, I didn't have to put up with bullshit. I could make my own choices. I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. He stalked towards me, the rest of his pack at his back. The rest that hadn't been taken out by Molly, that is. There were six of them, and one of me. I didn't care. I'd fought stacked odds before and won. I wanted to see what I could do against them. Then I felt her, the hot breath of a dragon at my back. For once I wasn't alone in this fight. There was Molly too. And she had my back. A dragon and a wolf, 
fighting it out against a rival pack of wolves in New York City. Hopefully my neighbors wouldn't notice. I was betting on the fact that they wouldn't notice anything out of the ordinary. It was a stretch, but so was this fight, and I liked the odds I had. Molly sniffed behind me. I smirked. Let's do this. Chapter 4 Molly I didn't recognize any of the wolves in the yard, but that didn't mean I didn't know them. I growled as loudly as I dared, not wanting to start any more fires at Logan's house while simultaneously letting the wolves know this would not be an easy fight. I wanted them scared. I wanted them helpless. I wanted them shaking in their goddamn fur. Maybe it hadn't been the best choice to let my dragon take over, but she was so much more dominant than my wolf. The wolves charged at me. I snapped my jaws at two black wolves coming for me, picking one up and flinging him into a tree with ease. The crunch of his bones hitting the trunk made me purr with satisfaction. Snapping at my paws brought my attention downward. Two wolves snarled at me. I puffed small fire tendrils at them. Flames shot out and tangled themselves in their fur. They jumped and rolled on the grass, trying to put themselves out. I nearly laughed at the sight. Pathetic dogs. Logan was not far from me. The alpha of the pack had obviously decided to take him out. The silver wolf was attacking him and he had reinforcements. It wasn't a fair fight, far from it. Logan was strong and determined, but he was an inexperienced shifter and beer floated through his bloodstream which slowed him down. I bit into another wolf that came at me. Then a cry of pain from behind me got my attention. I whipped around. The other wolves surrounding their alpha had jumped Logan as a whole. The silver alpha had his jaws around Logan's neck while the other pulled at his legs with their strong teeth. No. I head-butted another wolf that came at me and stormed over to where they had Logan on the ground. The ground shook beneath my heavy feet. I hoped it would deter the wolves, a warning of thunder just before a storm. Instead they stayed focused on their task at hand. Biting, mauling and ripping at Logan's wolf body. They didn't even look up in my direction. Good. Let them be surprised. I lowered my head and sunk my teeth into the alpha's body, then waited for him to unlock his jaw from Logan. When he did, I clamped my teeth down and threw him as far as I could. I didn't even hear him hit the ground, a tree wherever he landed. The wolves around us howled and snarled, and I batted them away like they were nothing more than flies. I looked down on the wolf body that was Logan's shifter. He was bleeding and barely breathing. I needed to get him away from here, now. I picked him up gently while the wolves circled me. I extended my wings and launched myself into the air, holding Logan's body with my talons. A couple of the wolves tried to jump after me. One managed to sink its claws into my hind leg. I let out a roar, surprised by the amount of pain the wolf managed to inflict. I tried to kick him off, but he didn't budge. Bastard. I started flying in quick sharp patterns, whipping my leg out, swinging it back and forth. Finally, the wolf lost his grip on me and fell towards the ground. I flew higher up and into the clouds. It was dark, but the last thing I wanted to do was have a human see me in my dragon form. There were laws about that. Granted, I was sure I had already broken a few going after Logan, but I was prepared to face the ramifications of my actions, if I was caught of course. I didn't want to dig my grave any deeper than I already had unless it was an absolute necessity. I carried Logan all the way home to my pack. Our home was a woodlands, dense with trees and dotted with small handmade cabins. The air was clean, the area quiet. Perfect for hiding from the outside world. I lowered and landed not far from the front door of my house. The ground vibrated as I landed, but I was going out of my way to be as gentle as my dragon shifter would let me. I put Logan down in the grass, his massive silver wolf's fur drenched with blood. His eyes were closed and he took in sharp gasping breaths. I groaned with discomfort as I let go of my dragon shifter, allowing the scales to slip away and my human form to re-emerge. I panted, watching Logan laying there. He needed to shift if I was going to get him cleaned up properly. 
Can you shift back? I asked between heaving breaths. He lay there for long moments while I got my breath, then finally he let go of his wolf, and we were both naked in the front yard, the moon the only light where I stood. Logan was still laying on the ground, and as I took a step forward, he held an arm up. Give me a sec, I can do it. He struggled to get his feet under him, but with the help of his strong arms, and obvious determination to ignore the blood covering his limbs, he finally managed to stand. Albeit with a definite lean, and wobble. I met Logan's pain-filled blue eyes, and for the first time I saw his vulnerability. I only knew him maybe a couple of hours at best, but I was more than positive that Logan was not the sort of person to so easily let his guard down in front of others, even when it came to physical pain. I let my gaze linger on him, on his face though I was tempted to check him out and truly appreciate his glorious body, before he cleared his throat, shifting his gold eyes away from me as he flinched with pain. I looked down at my feet, grass squished between my toes. Um. I'll go get us some clothes, I said. I raced towards the front of the house, the heat of Logan's eyes on my ass following me the whole way. Jerk. At least I pretended not to be interested in his body. I was never self-conscious while naked anymore. I'd been shifting too long for that. Still, if he was going to look at me, I should at least be able to look at him. It was only fair. Although feeling Logan's presence and his eyes on me, I felt strangely embarrassed. Maybe that was why I was rushing away instead of lingering, swinging my hips, making him realize he could look all he wanted, but that by no means gave him any right to touch. I snuffed out a breath and stopped in front of the door. I found the key in its hiding place under the mat, opened the front door, and flicked on the lights inside the cabin. The others in the pack would see my lights on and assume I was home, which meant we would probably have visitors very soon. Which meant I needed Logan stitched up and presentable. My pack didn't trust outsiders, even if Logan was one of their own kind. In my bedroom, I pulled on some jeans and a warm sweater, then found an old pair of sweatpants that Logan would probably fit into. I always kept pieces of my brother's stuff around when I was feeling particularly lazy and wanted to stay in and snack and binge watch television. By the time I got back to the front door, Logan was standing on the patio with blood still dripping down his chest and out of gaping holes in his thighs. So much for giving him a pair of sweatpants to wear. I put down the clothes and grabbed a towel instead that was folded neatly in a pile of washing on the sofa I had been too lazy to actually put away, and handed him that instead. Um, here you go. I found myself teetering on the line of glancing at his masculinity, or still giving him privacy. He took the towel and wrapped it around his waist, a smirk on his face that seemed to indicate he was very aware of what I was thinking. Come inside, I said. I nodded to the door and nearly hit my head on the frame. I hope he didn't see my obvious awkwardness. Let me look at your wounds. I tried not to perv on him, but how could I not let my gaze wander with a man so spectacularly designed walking around my house? At least I made sure to wait until he walked past me, his back to me. I shuddered at the sight. His body was incredible. I had the sudden urge to run my hands up and down his skin, sinking my nails in him and leaving my marks. I wanted everyone to know he was mine. I didn't want a single pair of eyes lingering on him for too long. I slapped a hand over my face. What the fuck? When I dropped my hand, Logan was standing next to my couch and my piles of laundry, arms over chest, only emphasizing his biceps, smirk on his face. He was not being shy in the slightest. I breathed out a sigh. Fine. If he wanted me to look. I dropped my gaze, taking in his muscled body. If that was how strong and hugely muscled he could be by ignoring his shifter side and drinking beer every night, I could only imagine how amazing he would be if he started training and eating right. Not to mention his manly bits. Damn. I hadn't known a man could look that sexy. My mouth went dry again. I needed some water. Can you sit on the table? I forced myself to ask, pulling my eyes back to his face. I'll, um, get the first aid kit. I ran off to the laundry room and grabbed the box, 
giving myself a moment to collect myself. Our shifter genes meant that we healed well and quickly, but that didn't mean we were immortal or that we couldn't die from our injuries. As such, I kept a stocked up first aid box in the house at all times. When I walked back into the kitchen, Logan had already dressed, which sent a shock of relief and a wave of disappointment through my body. He sat on the kitchen table with his legs stretched out in front of him. His hands rested in his lap. He looked at me as I placed the first aid box on the table. Are you okay with me treating these? I asked, gesturing to his legs and belly where the wolves had torn into him. I wanted to touch him, but I was afraid to. Which made no sense, because I wasn't afraid of anything. Yeah, go for it. He waved a hand and glanced over to my kitchen. Although I usually heal up pretty quick. I smiled at his attempt to make this all seem normal, when I knew it was far from it. I got down on my knees. It's one of the great things about being a shifter, I said as I ripped open the packaging of several bandages and began washing his wounds with saline. He hissed out a breath as I wiped over the jagged edges. Blood was beginning to pool beneath him. I frowned, all traces of laughter gone. Hum, these aren't healing up as fast as I'd like. I tilted my head to the side and brushed my finger on the outside of one particularly large wound. More blood gushed out. I'll use some butterfly sutures if that's okay. I looked up at him, perking my brow. He nodded, his jaw tight with tension. You can whimper if you want, I teased, grabbing more supplies from the first aid kit. I won't judge you. He rolled his eyes but a grin slid onto his face. I squirted more saline into the deep wounds on his thighs, then dried it with one of the towels. I pursed my lips and blew on the injury, hoping to hasten the healing process. It was only after I lifted my head did I realize how close I was to him. It wasn't as though his injuries were in inappropriate places on his body. However, they weren't in places typically on display either. The moment was more intimate than I'd anticipated. I bit my bottom lip and quickly applied more saline, hoping to distract the both of us. He hissed again, and pain hit me square in the chest. I hated that he was so badly wounded. I shook my head, sitting up straight. I'm sorry. I just need to dry it. I patted the flesh down with my fingers, trying to be gentle. So the sutures will stick. I moved quickly, pulling the flesh together and taping it with the butterfly bandages. Luckily, I was decent enough at basic first aid due to the practice I had with my own body, the injuries my pack had sustained over our time together. I pulled and pressed, holding my breath until the blood flow began to slow down. Logan breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, he muttered, not looking at me. He flexed his fingers and stood up, testing everything out. They're beginning to feel better already. He held his side with one hand, and thick blood spilled between his fingers. Damn it. There's more. Can you lie back and I'll see what I can do for that one? I nodded at his hand, and he flinched, as though he could already feel the saline and the stitching even before I made any move to go near it. Don't move too quickly. I don't want you making it worse. I knew he'd say yes. I knew from the few hours I had been around him that he was as prideful as I was, maybe even more so. He might not want me to fix him up but he would agree to it so he wouldn't seem scared. I would have called him out on it too. I grabbed an old cushion from the couch and placed it on the kitchen table. Luckily the table was one of those big ones that seated eight people. Fine, he finally agreed. Lay back, I said, placing my hand on his core, careful to avoid his injury. I told myself I was guiding him to the table. I told myself it wasn't because I wanted an excuse to feel him, to make him twitch underneath my fingers. It'll only take a minute. He hesitated, so I waited. I knew common sense would win out in the end. I wasn't sure if he hesitated because he was scared of the sharp pain or if he was surprised I was touching him this way. I pressed into the touch, just barely. Finally, groaning, he laid back on the table and let me see the wound. My hand fell naturally to the side, and I stepped towards him, giving myself better access to his wound. I leaned forward, 
placing my hands behind my back so I wouldn't touch him at all once he was all healed up, or on his way to being healed, then I might give myself permission to touch him more. I focused my attention on the wound and the amount of blood seeping out of it. Hum, I murmured. That's deeper than I thought it would be. I grabbed a paper towel from the kitchen bench and tried to clean up the blood around the injury. The amount of blood startled me. He didn't seem to be lightheaded, though. It meant his body was in shape to heal and was trying to do just that. Luckily, I wasn't squeamish in the slightest, but I could definitely see the torn muscle around his belly and the bones of his ribs. My bottom lip jutted out. My stomach tightened. I had hurt myself a lot in my life, and even then, I could not imagine the sort of pain he must be experiencing at this moment. Yeah, well, they did a good job of almost killing me, he said. His voice was strained, as though he was trying to hold back how much pain he was actually in. I nearly snorted. Him and his pride. I need to thank you for saving me like that, Molly. My brow perked, but I quickly smoothed it over. I didn't want him to think he was able to catch me off guard. I shrugged, hoping he couldn't hear the slight quiver in my voice. It was no problem. A part of me was struggling with the idea that it may be my fault that they found him. Had they been following me? Or had we found him at the same time? I suppose I would never know. He lifted his arm up to give me more space, and I moved closer, the scent of his body rising up and into my nostrils. I fought against the moan that vibrated through my chest. My mouth went dry. I tried to swallow, but couldn't easily. I needed to get a grip on myself. Despite the deep wounds, he was still such a spectacular-looking man. His arms were huge and his chest was just so beautifully defined and strong. I wanted to lick my way over his pecs and explore every inch of his body until he was screaming at me to present for him. I wanted to consume the sweat from his body and sink my nails into his skin so he would never forget my name. I cleared my throat loudly as heat flushed up my cheeks. Damn heat. Damn Logan. It wasn't like I didn't know other shifters, nicer than Logan, more personable. It wasn't like I was a shy virgin, hiding behind my fan or handkerchief. But now, all I wanted was Logan. No one else would do. Fuck. I cleaned the wound and patted it dry quickly. Being this close to him wasn't good for my libido. It wasn't good for my mind either. Or my body. Or any part of me, really. I could feel my shifter responding to him, which was the last thing either of us needed. Ah, oh, what's that? Logan asked. I grabbed his arm, the tingles of attraction pulsing along my fingers as I moved his shoulder to relax the wound. I needed to steady myself or else I was going to fall into him and then forget how to pick myself up. And if things got heated between the two of us, well, I wasn't going to complain about it. I wasn't going to stop it, either. What's what? I asked as I managed to butterfly bandage some of the flesh together, but the blood wouldn't stop flowing from the wound. I frowned. I think you need to stand up and I'll bandage this one. It's pretty bad. I don't like that you're still bleeding. Your shifter should have healed that already, or at least the blood should have slowed. Logan rolled slowly off the table and swayed as he stood up. I reached out to grab his upper arm, helping him stay steady. I was strong, but I didn't think I was strong enough to catch him if he needed me to. I'll be quick, I said. Then you can lie down. I placed some gauze over the wound and slowly wrapped his belly with a bandage. This time, it wasn't because I was lingering for some selfish, sexual reason. I wanted to make sure he wasn't harmed in the process. More than that, I wanted to make sure I was doing a good job. The gauze had to be tight and firm, but allow him the ability to move slightly without risking him making the injury worse. I stopped when he sighed in a way that indicated he was feeling better. Let's get you into bed, I said, standing up straight and stretching out my muscles. They had tightened during my wound healing process. I put my arm around his waist and directed him into the second bedroom in my small house. It wasn't anything special, but it had a bed, and that was what Logan needed right now. 
This is nice, he said, taking a cursory glance around. Whose room is it? Just a spare, for anyone who needs it, I said as I hoisted him a little closer. He was getting tired, and his weight bore into me. I was strong, but I was surprised by his weight I would topple over if I didn't balance my weight. The smell of his body made me groan, and I heaved him a little closer as arousal spiraled inside me. I tried to shake my head, tried to rid myself of the intoxicating aroma, but I couldn't. Deep down, I didn't want to. He hefted himself the last few feet and managed to fall onto the bed, making it look like he did it on purpose. He gritted his teeth as he lifted his legs up on the bed and lay back against the pillows. Then he relaxed and his content sigh filled the air. He'd managed to lose his towel somewhere between the kitchen and the bedroom, so I grabbed an extra blanket from the cupboard and draped it over his legs and covered him to his chest. The last thing I needed was any sort of temptation to indulge in. Get a grip on yourself, Molly. Thanks, he said, his eyes closed. You're welcome. My voice came out scratchy and I cleared my throat. I let my gaze linger on him. It was both strange and right to see him in my bed, completely naked and covered to the chest. Like he belonged here. It was odd for me to even consider such a thing. It wasn't as though I was a romantic. I shook my head and stepped back, ready to take a cold shower. You didn't answer my question before, he said, his voice low and grumbly. I paused, frowning. I was nearly as exhausted as he was. Just because I hadn't gotten injured badly in the fight with the wolves didn't mean it hadn't taken a lot out of me. However, there was a part of me that did want to stay with him for as long as I could get away with. I walked to the other side of the bed and sat down in the armchair near the window so I could look at him. The chair was comfortable enough so I could rest as well. I melted into the cracked leather, and I sighed with relief. My nerves were fried from the fight, and I wanted nothing more than to sleep everything off. Oh sorry, I mumbled. Which one? When I asked what that was I meant the smell, he said, wrinkling his nose. I opened my eyes to find him looking at me. You have this scent that I've never come across before. Is it one of your shifters? Fire raced up my neck and blossomed in my face. Oh my god. He smelled my heat. He didn't know what that it was, but he could smell it. I debated lying to him. The last thing I needed was him knowing something so insanely vulnerable about me. And yet, I was too tired to think of a good excuse as to what else it could possibly be. I heaved a sigh, bending my neck forward. My ponytail fell over my shoulder, and I began to play with the ends so I could avoid looking at him. Um, it's probably my dragon shifter, I said. She's in heat, not that anyone else has noticed, but you're part dragon too, so um, yeah. I started braiding my hair. Braids were more preferable in battle than ponytails because it helped keep my hair contained. However, when I'd left to find Logan, I hadn't been expecting a battle at all, so it was loose. Yes, that makes sense, he said. I was so tempted to ask him what he meant by that. Had he been aroused too? Had his dragon wanted to mate with me, as much as I wanted him? I couldn't tell by his voice. Instead of asking, I squashed the desire to know because really, where would that get us? Even more frustrated than we currently were, that's where. I wanted him. Maybe he wanted me. But just because we wanted each other, didn't mean we were actually going to do anything about it. I stretched my legs as far as they would go, trying to suppress a yawn but failing. From where I sat, I noticed just how faded the wallpaper was. I made a mental note to update it when I could. Unfortunately, that list of updates was getting crowded, and I didn't have the time to apply them at all. I ripped my gaze from the wallpaper and looked him in the face once again. We didn't really get to finish our chat back at your place, but this is my house. I gestured to the room. My pack has a cluster of cabins here in the woods. It's safe. You're safe here. He shuffled so that he was sitting up more, sweat rolling down his face at the effort. I was almost compelled to reach out and settle him back down. He couldn't be squirming so much or else he'd pop a stitch, and that was the last thing I wanted. 
The blood on my blankets, the wound I'd have to stitch up again, the fact that I would be close to him again, that I would be touching him again. I rubbed my lips together. This was the worst time to be distracted by sex. I needed to make sure he was healing. If that is your way of saying you think I should stay, you know my answer, Molly. His words were firm, but he looked away. I inhaled sharply through my nose. I was not going to let him get away with that simple, dismissive statement. If he wanted to reject me, fine, but I was going to make him say it. I wouldn't let him weasel his way out of it. And what's that? He sighed rather dramatically. I'm not sure if I want to stay. But you haven't even met anyone or seen our setup yet. I needed to be focused. How do you know you don't want to stay here if you don't even know where here is? I raised my brow. He nodded slowly, one long finger, a finger I would have no problem slipping inside my wet folds until it hit that special spot that would release this balled-up tension I had been carrying around with me for a while, tapped his chin. That's true. I'll be back in a sec, I said, jumping up. I nearly tripped over myself on my way out, but I caught myself against the doorframe just in time. My face turned red, heat burning my skin. I hoped he hadn't seen me, but his low chuckles told me otherwise. God damn it, I muttered as I stepped outside. I went and fetched him a bottle of water from the fridge and some strong pain meds. His body would burn them off pretty fast, but it would give him an hour or two of sleep. I also hoped it would help his body heal more quickly. I wasn't sure why that one injury was taking longer than usual, but it unnerved me. If he did want to leave, the last thing I wanted to do was let him go with something detrimental to his health. I wouldn't let him leave until he was fully capable of taking care of himself. The truth of the matter was, I hoped I wouldn't have to let him go at all. When I returned to the room, Logan had a leg on top of the blanket, inspecting the once deep wounds. His gaze was intent, focused. Heat flooded through me. I wanted to reach out and smooth the wrinkle on his brow. Any excuse to touch him? Looking good? I asked, though I could see the repair was already well underway. I breathed a sigh of relief. I was glad to know that some things still worked. He needed to be healthy. At least, he needed to be able to heal quickly. Yeah, won't be long now. He picked his gaze up from his wound to look at me, to pin me where I stood so I couldn't breathe, let alone move. I smiled at him as calmly as I could, though my heart pounded with desire and heat whispered through my veins. God, I wanted him. I wanted him badly. I wanted him in such a way I didn't know what to do to myself. Not that it mattered. I barely knew Logan, and it wasn't like he was interested in me. Well, I could sense he wanted sex. But I didn't think it was the right thing. Not when we were still at possible risk. Not when he still had to heal. I clenched my teeth to keep a whimper from coming out of my mouth. My inability to control my heat would be my undoing. It might even be his. You've got remarkable healing capacity for a shifter, I forced myself to say, and swallowed hard when his interested gaze hit mine. Yeah. My heart skipped a beat. Vibrations ran through my body, like an electrical current. Like an earthquake with aftershocks that sent little ripples straight to my core. I was in literal pain. I was going crazy because I could not, would not, have sex with him. I nodded. Yeah, I said. My voice cracked and I cleared my throat. I hoped he didn't realize this was stemming from my obvious desire for him. Then again, I also didn't care. It's one of the many reasons the other shifters hate us. What do you mean? His brow furrowed. I took in a deep breath. Talking about what he was momentarily paused my need for him. It was something I could focus on, something that grounded me rather than the illicit fantasies running across my mind in flashes. The soul dragons, they hate us. I chanced a step farther into the room, and then another. I longed to sit back in my chair, but I didn't trust myself to be so close to him. At least not yet. Maybe after a cold shower. They hate me. I was forced out of my den when I was a teenager, both my mother and I. I stopped talking. 
Why had I brought up my mother at all? It wasn't as though he wanted to hear something so personal from someone he barely knew. It wasn't as though I wanted to bring up something from my past. My heart squeezed. At least it made me forget wanting to have sex so badly. Where's your mother now? He asked. I shrugged, taking in the dirt on my shoes. I wanted to blink my tears away, but I didn't want to make them fall, I honestly don't know. We separated a few years ago, when the hatred for the hybrids became too great. She led the hunters away from me, and I haven't seen her since. Pain ripped across my chest like claws tearing open my skin. Memories of my mother came piling into my mind, and I couldn't stop them if I tried. I had broken the dam and now they flooded in. Mom had been fierce, strong and kind, everything I tried and most of the time failed to be. So you were, what? Rejected for being a hybrid? I appreciated Logan's attempt to stay on topic. My breathing still hitched like a dagger in the side, but I pushed forward. I didn't want to start myself up and be resorted to the waterworks in front of Logan. I highly doubted we were going to have sex, but crying would guarantee it. Yeah, pretty much. I sniffed and resisted the urge to reach up and wipe any hint of snot or tears away with the back of my hand. It would have been gross, and I did not want him to think I was gross. Annoying, sure. Frustrating and stubborn, of course. But I wouldn't be able to come back from gross. We're stronger, faster, more adaptable than any other shifter, and they hate us for it. They resent us because we aren't like them. And they're trying to take us out as a result. Who? He frowned as though he didn't understand why this was happening in the first place. I couldn't blame him. Before now, he probably thought he was the only one of his kind, if he even knew he was a hybrid in the first place. And here I was, telling him he that he was not only a hybrid, but hunted for what he was. His entire world had been thrown upside down. The fact that he was even entertaining me was a big deal. The soul shifters, I explained. The dragons. The wolves. They hate that I can outrun them, outfly them. They hate that they can't predict my next move, that I have different weaknesses than they do, so they aren't quite sure how to plan to attack me. They hate that they don't know if they should expect the dragon or the wolf. They hate that my abilities are vastly superior than theirs. Yours are too, I'm sure. I stepped farther in the room, easing myself in like stepping into a hot bath. It was easy to be in the same room as Logan when my gaze was focused on my hands and I kept a reasonable distance from the bed and the very naked shifter underneath the sheets. They say we're an abomination, I continued. I pressed my fingertips together in front of me. Talking was a good distraction as well. It prevented me from thinking, from fantasizing. That we shouldn't even exist. That we should be eradicated because we could be a threat. As though we shouldn't have the same right to life they do simply because we're different than they are. I crossed my arms over my chest. I think they're just terrified that we're going to create more and more shifters that don't fall in line with their laws. I finally looked up at him to see how he was handling what I was telling him. Even I knew it was a lot. Maybe it was even too much. But he needed to hear it. He had a right to know. His hazel eyes locked onto me, and a surge of warmth flooded through my body. It was more than just sexual desire and a need to feel his hardness buried deep within me. He groaned and his hand went to his side where the deepest of his wounds were. I handed him the painkillers, making sure not to inadvertently touch him. I hadn't forgotten that he was naked under the blanket. My mouth dried up just thinking about it, and my pelvis throbbed. These will give you a couple of hours of relief, I said. By then you should be fully healed. He nodded, taking the pills, and swallowed them down with the bottle of water I handed to him. Thanks, he said. A silence lingered between us, full and heavy with tension. I needed to leave, but my feet wouldn't let me. It was like they were filled with cement. I was rooted in place. Good night, Logan, I forced myself to say. Maybe the words would work like some sort of incantation and lift me from this spell he had me under. When I lifted my leg in order to try again, it worked. 
With one last look, I walked away and took all my frustrated heat with me. This was a good thing, I reminded myself. Having sex would only complicate everything between us. I knew this. And yet, walking away from Logan was harder than I'd imagined. Chapter 5 Logan I couldn't fucking sleep. My brain raced faster than ever, and with no alcohol in my system, I couldn't drift off as easily as I used to. It didn't help that my body was burning with accelerated healing that was more painful than I remembered. Living an isolated life meant few physical confrontations, which meant I had no reason to heal from anything. I wondered if, like muscles, I needed to use my healing ability consistently, or it would take longer and cause more harm than it otherwise would have. I was also distracted by the thought of having Molly's legs wrapped around my hips. I swallowed, glancing out the window. Even with my shifter eyes, I couldn't make anything out in the ink blackness. She looked like she would give just as much as she got. I wanted her writhing beneath me. I wanted her screaming my name. I grunted. My face flushed with desire. Sitting here thinking about Molly, my nostrils still picking up her unique scent, was only making it worse. I needed to rid myself of the distraction, of her, and then maybe I'd be able to finally get some goddamn sleep. I threw my legs over the edge of the bed and stood up. Maybe if I took a walk, it would help. At least it was a constructive physical activity, instead of sitting around, fantasizing about the shifter sleeping in the other bedroom. Instead of thinking about her, I turned my attention to my injuries. I couldn't believe I had faced down a pack of shifter wolves. I couldn't believe I'd survived. Thanks in major part to Molly. Stop, I told myself in my head. Stop thinking about her. You're better than this. You are not this pathetic. I clenched my teeth and looked down at my wounds. The pain was mild. Nothing worse than after a bad workout. She had done a good job of patching me up, and my body was knitting back together nicely. Stop. I glanced down at my naked body. I needed some clothes, but where would I find a pair of jeans that would fit me in a woman's home? A goal. Thank God I had something I could focus on that didn't have the longest legs I had ever seen, flowing hair, full lips, and a body I wanted to get to know better. Not that those things mattered. What mattered was that I was healing, I was getting better, and soon, I could leave. I pulled the sheet from the bed, surprised to find it clean and white and crisp. Brand new, practically. Molly obviously hadn't received too many visitors in this place. For some reason, that made me feel good. An inexplicable growl ripped through my throat. The thought of her being with anyone else gutted me. I had the sudden urge to rip apart anyone who she had been with, limb from limb. It made no sense. I didn't even know Molly. I'd never even had her. And yet, I was acting as though she were mine. This wasn't who I was. I wasn't jealous or territorial or protective. I liked being on my own. I liked only worrying about me. This new feeling, this was exactly why I wanted nothing to do with this pack of hybrids. This was why I didn't want anything to do with Molly. I wrapped the sheet around my waist in case I happened to run into her while prowling around her house looking for clothes. I opened the door and stuck my head out into the living room. There was an orange salt lamp burning in the corner, but otherwise the only other light in the room came from the moon outside. Peace that washed over me when I noticed the moon. It brought a sense of relief that affected the shifter inside of me, like putting a bomb on a fresh wound. I walked out into the living space, sidestepping some of the laundry she must have accidentally knocked over when she left to get me medicine. I glanced around, not wanting to be caught snooping. However, I couldn't help but be interested in her lifestyle. If my room indicated no one came over, I wanted to see if the other room said the same thing. Also, I hoped that maybe she would have some freshly washed clothes I could wear in her laundry. From what I could see it was mostly delicates, underwear, bras, and nighties. I was curious to see what type of underwear she wore, but the last thing I needed was her walking in on me holding some. 
I stepped from the couch and scanned the room in its entirety, one hand on my hip to keep the sheet from falling down. The small space had a warm feeling of being lived in and appreciated. A cup of discarded tea sat on the coffee table. A book with a bookmark tucked inside was next to it. In the corner sat a small TV on a table, and a bookcase just off to the side with a variety of books she must have read due to the creases in the spines. A potted plant that was nearly dead sat in a corner, and I dumped the tea into its pot, hoping to buy it a few more days of life. I placed the cup on the table, and glanced at the mantle over the small fireplace. I frowned. I expected pictures to line the mantle, but besides a couple of trinkets, it was completely empty. I turned from the mantle and made my way to the window. She had mentioned her pack lived close by and might see her return, but there had been no visitors since I arrived. For that, I was grateful. The last thing I needed was more strangers in a confined space, checking me out and talking about what to do with me, without even asking my opinion on the matter. It didn't seem like I had anything to worry about, however. If my senses were correct, there was hardly a soul for miles. Nothing but wilderness and crisp fresh air. Exactly what I'd always wanted. What I craved. Even the small home I had in my possession was still close enough to the city where it was difficult to make out the stars in the sky at night, and I could smell pollution every time I took in a breath. Here I could be free. I could be myself. It was a place where I didn't have to hide who I was, not even to myself. Being a hybrid was something I still had to wrap my head around, but I could do that here and not worry about it. But was this my answer? Could I really live with a pack of people like me? I didn't like the thought of someone depending on me. I didn't like being obligated to do anything unless it was something I wanted to do. I had never been part of a pack, but I knew I would have to adhere to their rules and go with whatever the pack decided. I respected that, but I didn't agree with it. It was why I chose to remain on my own. I let out a sigh, shaking my head. I was usually good at making decisions. But now, I couldn't figure out the best solution. There was nothing outside but trees, grass, dirt. A whole expanse of woods. I couldn't even make anything out past that. My body itched to shift, itched to run and explore and just let myself be free, without worry of being caught. I grunted, trying to imagine if this was a place I could live. What would I do with myself all day? Would I get bored of running? Would I resent having to listen to people who might be like me, but who I didn't actually care about? Would I feel trapped within my freedom? Could I leave if I wanted to, when I wanted to? A door creaked behind me, and I turned around to see Molly standing in her bedroom doorway, smelling of that intoxicating scent that drove my dragon insane. She wore shorts and an oversized Led Zeppelin shirt. Her hair was messy, tumbling down her back in inky waves. I wanted to run my fingers through the strands and see if it was as silky as I imagined it to be. Hell, I wanted to bend her over the couch and fuck her from behind in her laundry. I swallowed against the growl that rose in my throat. I shifted into my wolf, trying to distract myself. The last thing I needed right now was to get hard in front of her. I didn't want to scare her. I definitely didn't want her to think I was some kind of pervert who couldn't keep it in his pants. You've seen her stare. You've seen her look at you with hooded eyes, biting her bottom lip. Maybe she wants you too. The thought stopped me. Did she feel the same way as I did? And if she did, how was she stopping herself from acting on the impulse? I wanted to ask, but doing so would be admitting that I wanted her, and I didn't think that would be appropriate. Not yet, anyway. Hey, she said, not approaching me. She shifted her weight, drawing my eyes down to her legs. I should look away. I should look at anywhere but her, and her freshly cleaned underwear. But I couldn't help myself. Her strong thighs made me wish I knew how they felt, wrapped around my waist. Ah hey, I forced myself to say. I hoped she hadn't noticed me staring. Can't sleep, she asked, and then walked into the room and turned a thermostat dial on the wall. She sounded concerned. If she did notice my long appraisal of her legs, she gave no indication. 
For that, I was thankful. I wasn't sure what I would have said if she confronted me about it. All our houses are pretty well set up. Solar power, central heating. I'll turn this up. It might help. It's getting a little chilly in here. I could see that. It's a nice place you've got here, I said. I hope I didn't wake you up. She shook her head, walking over to the sofa, and curled up on the cushion, pulling a throw blanket over her bare legs. Her gaze landed on her discarded laundry, and she frowned. It almost seemed as though she had forgotten it was there in the first place, and was only now remembering that she hadn't put it away yet. No you didn't, she assured me. I've been tossing and turning for an hour, and when I heard you get up, I thought the company might help settle us both. I nodded, and walked over to the armchair so I could sit opposite her. I'm sure you have lots of questions. She tilted her head to the side, her hair spilling over her shoulder. Sure. I nodded longer than necessary. Well no. No questions just yet. I'm still digesting all of the information you gave me. You can pick the topic. What do you want to talk about? I sounded like a fucking moron. The fact that she hadn't kicked me out of her house was a blessing. She shuffled in her spot, looking like a cute cat. I don't know. She shrugged. Tell me why you live in that tiny house by yourself. Wolves are pack animals, and even dragons mate for life. You can't be happy like that, by yourself all the time. I shifted with unease. It was as though she had read my mind, read all the thoughts I had been ruminating on before she came out here. I didn't really like the way she'd turned the conversation, but I did ask for it. I did invite her to bring up anything. I had hoped she would keep things safe, but I should have realized that instead of shying away from any personal questions, she plowed right for them. Which meant I couldn't shy away from them either, like I normally would. I had to face them head on. You don't have any beers in your fridge, do you? I asked, my thumb tapping my knee. Answering would be so much easier with a beer in my hand. She laughed. Um no. She shook her head. I should have been disappointed by her answer, but the fact that it made her smile in a way that lit up her entire face was worth it. We don't have any alcohol here. It screws up our ability to shift and defend ourselves, and with prevalent threats, we can't risk it. Sorry about that. Ah yes. Forgot about that part. I looked away from her sweet face. Didn't she know where I came from? What sort of people I'd grown up with? Alcohol was a best friend from my early years. I liked that it inhibited my ability to shift. That alone kept me safe. You need to spend more time in your shifting form, Logan, she said, her gaze directly on me. I didn't like how vulnerable I felt under her stare, like she could penetrate to my very soul, despite my heavy armor. You'll learn to control your animals more. Learn to love them, not fear them. Embrace them rather than hide from them. Anger whipped through my gut. I'm not afraid of anything, I told her. I stopped tapping my thumb and instead gripped both arms of the chair restraining myself. I'm not hiding from anything. She rolled her eyes. She did not seem affected whatsoever by my anger in the slightest. I wasn't sure if I was impressed or annoyed. Okay, whatever. She threw her hands up like she was surrendering. That's not what I meant. I know what it's like to be totally out of control. To worry about biting someone's arm off, or burn a house down. It's difficult for me to control my temper, even now. I've worked really hard to develop this, I don't know. It's like an inner peace. I'm not saying I don't get mad, but it's a controlled anger. I can still think clearly, but it's taken a long time. I get why you drown your shifters in beer, and push them down until you can't hear them anymore. I get why you choose to ignore them rather than attempt to understand them. I looked at her through slitted eyes. My vision had shifted a little, and my dragon was popping his head up. You tried to ignore them too, huh? I didn't know why a warmth spread across my chest. I didn't know why I cared that I wasn't the only one intimidated by my shifters. Not that I would ever admit that out loud. It just felt good not to be the only one. 
I nearly rolled my eyes at myself. The last thing I wanted to do was come across like a pathetic asshole. I cleared my throat and tugged on the sweatpants. Awkward was better than pathetic. She laughed softly. Well, not exactly the way you do it, but yeah. She curled her long black hair behind her ear. I had the sudden desire to touch her. I fought my shifters with everything I had. It wasn't until I found myself here, in the middle of the woods, staring at my brother's body, did I realize I was a coward. My skin pinched with goosebumps. I tilted my head, my ears perked in her direction. I didn't want to ask her any questions, afraid she wouldn't say anything to me. Afraid she would realize she was confessing too much too soon and stop herself. I wanted to hear what she had to say. I wanted to know more about her and what she went through to finally be at peace when she accepted her shifters. That didn't necessarily mean I was ready to do the same. But it did mean I was starting to be open to it. My brother was a shifter too, but just a wolf shifter, she continued. She fiddled with the hem of her shirt, not looking at me. He never resented me for it, though. He always took care of me. Always said God must have big plans if he had blessed me with two shifters. I didn't really believe in God, but for Kurt, I would do anything. So I never told him I didn't feel blessed. I never told him having two monsters inside of me felt more like a curse than a blessing. I nodded though I wasn't sure why. It wasn't like she had asked a question. It wasn't like she was looking at me at all to even see me nod. Anyway, this whole eradication of hybrids isn't a recent thing, she continued. I still don't know how they found out about me, but they did and they attacked me. This home was my brother's. He invited me to live with him. He told me this was the perfect place to get more acquainted with my shifters. He saw it like it was a good thing. She smiled, her eyes tearing up. He was the most annoying asshole I knew. I don't know how but he was so positive all the time. She shook her head, a tear rolling down her cheek. I leaned forward and then I stopped myself. I wanted to offer her comfort, but I didn't want her to think that I thought she was weak. I would wait until she was finished, to see if she even needed me at all. It wasn't long before a pack of wolf shifters attacked. Kurt wasn't even scared. He knew they were coming for me. They wanted me gone. They wanted me dead. Kurt hadn't been part of a pack for so long, but he still shifted every day. It's why he got this house with the land. When they came he tried to protect me. I screamed at him to stop. He was such an idiot. He, uh. Her voice trembled. She flared her nostrils and took a deep breath. He didn't care that there were six of them, and one of him. He didn't even look back to see if I was coming with him, or not. He just went off because he wanted to protect me. And I let him. Her head hung. Despite the fact that her hair fell in her face, blocking her profile from my view, I still saw tears on her face. I should have. She shook her head, rubbing her lips together. If I shifted into my dragon to help him, I would have been able to crush those wolves just like I did with you. But I didn't. Why not? I shouldn't have said anything. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Molly looked up at me with eyes that cut like knives. Shame touched every part of her body. I was sorry I asked, and I typically wasn't sorry about anything. To this day, I don't know for sure, she admitted. I was surprised. I didn't think she was going to say anything at all. I tell myself it's because I had never shifted into my dragon before. I tell myself I had no clue what I was doing. But even now, I know it's a lie. She sighed, her gaze dropping to the floor. I mean, I hadn't shifted before but I didn't even try. Because I was scared. I didn't want to face my dragon, even if it meant saving Kurt. And he died because of it. I opened my mouth to respond, but I had no idea what to say. I wanted to make her feel better, but I wasn't sure if she wanted to feel better. I also couldn't tell her it wasn't her fault because I wasn't there, and I refused to make her feel like I was humoring her. And yet, I felt like I should say something. My fingers longed to grasp a beer. Maybe being drunk would help me find the right words. 
if not the right words, then a jumble of them so the silence wasn't so heavy in here. Anyway, I promised myself I would never let something like that happen again, she said. Kurt died for me. He didn't have to, but he did. Somehow, I managed to get away, taking advantage of the distraction Kurt posed. But I'm still haunted by what happened, even today. From that point on, I promised myself I would not be afraid to embrace who I am, even if it's something unknown. I promised myself I would practice shifting the way Kurt wanted me to. I promised myself I'd get comfortable with every part of myself. I nodded, though inside my head there was turmoil. I wasn't familiar with dealing with conflicting emotions. I sympathized with her. I wanted to comfort her. I wanted to give her space so she understood that I respected her, and I thought she could handle things on her own. Her words also made me ashamed of my selfishness. Maybe it was a good idea, to surround myself with people like me. Because the truth of the matter was, I was afraid. I didn't want to get close to people. I didn't want to depend on them, and I sure as shit didn't want them to depend on me. And yet, the way she spoke of making her decision was almost too easy. The second the thought entered my head, I banished it. She had a reason for bettering herself. No one should ever have to suffer what she went through, but she had good a reason. I didn't. I had nothing except some gorgeous hybrid telling me to. You know you don't have to be alone anymore, Logan. She perked her brows. Right? A laugh bubbled up through my throat. I ignored the fact that my gaze still got caught on the streaks of tears on her cheeks, even though she wasn't crying anymore. I didn't need someone to care about me. Especially someone like her. You say it like the sky is blue, I said, turning away from her so I wouldn't be confronted with the look on her face, I crossed my arms over my chest and shook my head. It's not that easy, Molly. People don't change. Maybe you do. Maybe you had a reason to. But me. I've always been more comfortable alone, and I can't imagine not being that way. She shrugged and looked down at her lap. From my peripheral, I picked up the sadness in her eyes, which made no sense to me since we barely knew each other. And yet, I felt it too. I didn't want to, but I felt things I hadn't experienced in a long, long time. Yeah, but there's a reason people say, there's no place like home, she said. Have you ever had a place you fit in? Where there was loyalty, trust, understanding? I shook my head, not even having to think about it. I flexed my fingers, wishing I had a beer in my hand. It would be easy to listen to Molly's nonsense if I was buzzed. I didn't want to hear her emotions. I didn't want to assume I was responsible for them. Nope. What about your work, she said, sitting up straight. Now that she had me to focus on, she didn't seem as sad or upset about her brother. I suppose this was a good thing. I just didn't like the fact that the tables were turned, and now all her attention was on me. I cocked my head and thought about it for a minute. I work with some good guys, I said. But they don't know me. We don't hang out after work or anything like that. She stared at me for a while, her eyes big and assessing. They made me a little uncomfortable. They made me feel like she could see straight through me. I had nothing to hide, not really, and yet she made me feel so seen it was disconcerting. I opened my mouth, ready to ask her for a beer, only to remember that she didn't have any. Damn it. So you'd rather be alone, she said. Changing tactics. I wasn't sure if I was impressed with her strategy or not. Of course, I answered without thought. Wasn't it obvious? I lived alone on purpose. It wasn't like I couldn't get a woman, or a housemate. It wasn't like I closed myself off and isolated myself completely. I had a job, after all. Every now and then, I nodded at my neighbors. But besides that, I couldn't take the risk, it wasn't safe, for any potential relationship or for me. It was always better to be alone, unless I was horny. Then it was always better to have a woman in my bed. And it just so happened I had one in front of me. I wasn't going to waste it. Chapter 6 Molly 
I'd never met anyone before who needed love that way Logan did. I wanted to take him in my arms and tell him everything was going to be okay. I wanted him to understand that he could always have a home here. He didn't have to be with me by any means, but he would have a place to stay where he wouldn't have to hide, where he could be free to be himself and explore who that was. I knew I shouldn't be so tempted by the idea of helping him, fixing him. I didn't even want to fix him, except maybe the part where he drank excessively to numb his pain. I just wanted to heal him. I also wanted him in other ways. Yes, it was selfish. If I wasn't in heat the thought wouldn't have even crossed my mind because I was so insistent that Logan stay here, stay safe, especially with the potential of him being attacked by shifters. Now that I had finally found him, I didn't want to risk losing him. I didn't want him to think he had to face our enemy alone. Not that he needed help now that he knew who they were, but I wanted him to know if he did need it again, I was there for him. Looking at him now, I could see the conflict in his eyes. Part of me wanted to push for an answer to my question about him staying, now. And the other? The other wanted to rip his clothes off and fuck him on my floor. Logan cleared his throat. Time to change the subject, I think, he said. We've established I'm a lone wolf and want to stay that way. I pressed my lips together. I hadn't even begun to try and convince him to stay, but it was the middle of the night, and less threatening conversation was probably easier for him. I was tired too. The battle was starting to catch up to me, and I wanted to sleep. And yet, any chance to be around Logan was enough for me to stay. I shouldn't put myself in the line of fire, sitting in front of him, smelling his musk, trying to keep the throbbing in my pelvis to a minimum. But here I was, tired as hell and still sitting on my couch, trying to stay awake just so I could talk to him. I was pathetic. I hated being in heat. Sure, I said, trying to stifle a yawn. What do you want to talk about? His eyes flashed in the dim light with silver and something darker. Something that caused my pussy to ache with desire. A shudder ripped down my spine and I tensed, hoping he didn't notice. I didn't want him to see the effect he had on me. I didn't want to be even more attracted than I already was. I was tempted enough. I didn't need to set myself on fire. Tell me more about this heat of yours, Logan drawled, his tone sinfully sexy. Fuck. Why was he talking like this? Was it necessary? I should have had a bloody shower. I should have stayed in my room. I shouldn't have found Logan at all. No. Finding Logan was necessary to protect him, to help him. My face burned with embarrassment. You can smell me, can't you? I didn't want to know the answer. I shouldn't have asked. He laughed, but it wasn't at me. It was a low, husky sound. He was amused, but there was more to it than that. I didn't care. He was beginning to relax. Maybe if he relaxed, he could see himself staying here. Not because I was telling him to, but because he wanted to. Must be my enhanced sense of smell, he said. I glanced back to his eyes. They had become dark so quickly. Perhaps the smell of my heat had some sort of effect on him. Perhaps he wanted me just as much as I wanted him. What do you want to know about it? I asked. I had no idea if he even cared about my heat at all. But this was a good way to test my theory out, to see if he was even remotely interested in doing all the things I wanted him to do to me. Not that that would mean anything would be done. He was still healing and I was tired. But maybe. He grinned, flashing me his canines. My pelvis thrummed with desire. God, what was I coming to when even flashing his teeth at me was a turn-on? I was not be this easy. How often does it happen? He asked, cocking his head to the side. Some of his brown hair fell into his face. Can all shifters sense it? Or does it only drive dragons insane? A surprised laugh burst out of my mouth. So I drove him insane, huh? That was nice to know. Well, I don't know much, to be honest, I said. My mother was a wolf shifter, and they don't go into heat the way dragons do. 
Typically, at least when it comes to wolves, they go in heat and their mate can sense it, but no one else can. It's actually how a lot of mates meet. I don't know about the dragon culture. My dad left a long time before I ever started going in heat. And I have no clue how it affects hybrids. He nodded, but didn't say anything, and I decided to stand up and walk over to where he sat on the armchair. I didn't know where I was going to sit, but I wanted to be closer. This was a bad idea. And yet, I still couldn't bring myself to stay away. I wanted to touch him. I wanted to smell him. I wanted to drive myself crazy. I wanted to get burned. I wanted to crush my heart into a million pieces because, deep down, I knew he wouldn't want to stay, no matter what I said. He was a loner, and there was no changing it. But maybe I could extend our time together, if only for an hour or two more. Maybe I could indulge my temptations, finally scratch this itch I had been cursed with the past couple of days. If I gave in, I probably wouldn't want him as badly as I did. He patted his knee, and I bit my lip. Aren't you still injured? I asked. It was the perfect excuse to hesitate. He grabbed my hand and tugged me into his lap, answering my question. A big smile tilted up his lips as he stared at me. No, he said. He leaned in close, his nose caressing the column of my throat. I'm feeling amazingly healthy, actually. He stuck his head beneath my hair and inhaled deeply. I shuddered. I tried to hold myself back. I didn't want him to feel the way my traitorous body moved because of him. But I couldn't help it. I was at the point where I didn't care. And yet, I couldn't help but wonder what he was doing. Why he was giving in to these urges. Was it because he wanted this, or he was helpless to my aroma? Could he control himself, or was he finally giving in to something that had been tempting him since we met? Did it even matter? Um, are you smelling me? I asked. Why would you question what he's doing? I scolded myself. Just go with it. He chuckled and then kissed my pulse. I closed my eyes and swallowed hard against the needs that pushed into my mind. My throat bobbed, still painfully dry despite my attempt to moisten it. I wanted to kiss him, swallow him whole. But I hesitated. Not because I wanted to keep to myself. Not when I knew it was driving Logan as crazy as it was driving me. No. I'd never given in to my heat before, and what would it mean if I did? Did that mean we were mates? Or was it a different story with hybrids? Would it take away my desire for him? Or would it only enhance it? I couldn't imagine wanting him even more than I already did at this moment, but what if it got worse? And if he was leaving for sure, would I be in agony until my heat finally subsided? Yes, I am, he said against my skin. He trailed a kiss and then another down the column of my throat, and I gasped. His hand traced mindless patterns in my skin, setting every inch of me on fire. You smell incredible. His hand moved over to my thigh, and then slid up the outside of my leg until he was cupping my ass and squeezed. Like I belonged to him. Like he owned me, and could do whatever it was he wanted. I couldn't stop the moan that rose as his hand continued to move up. Are you? I couldn't get the rest of the sentence out. Not when every nerve on me was erect, waiting for the attention it had been craving since meeting him. His mouth found mine and our lips joined together on a shared groan. I didn't pull away, even though I probably should have. He tasted fantastic. Like sin and chocolate and everything good in the world. Like sunshine and rain. Like everything I could ever want to live on for the rest of my life. If he kissed me like that, what more could I possibly need in life? I moved closer and slid my hands up his arms. I wanted to feel the muscles, wanted to squeeze them and prove to myself that these were real and not some dream I elaborated because my heat had gotten out of hand. He let out a gentle sigh as I caressed him, and I felt my inner thighs grow increasingly moist. The fact that I had so much power over a self-proclaimed loner made me want to show him that he couldn't get me out his system so easily. If this was happening, and if he was leaving, I wanted to give him a night he would not forget. 
I wanted to give him something to regret leaving when he inevitably left in the morning. I threaded my fingers through his hair to hold him closer, to make sure he felt some pain along with pleasure. He growled and I smirked. Good. When he slanted his lips and swept his tongue into my mouth, I couldn't stop my own helpless reaction and moaned loudly. Strange how he could make me feel so powerful and yet so weak at the same time. I had been privy to many contradicting emotions before. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that not only was I a shifter, but I was a hybrid. As such, I was pulled into a bunch of directions and it was difficult to keep up. Logan somehow made me feel dizzy and yet grounded me. Something stirred deep inside me. I gently tugged his tongue with my teeth. My shifters were taking over in a way I would usually never allow. Why not just this once? What would it hurt? Logan answered me back with a growl. I twisted my body so I was straddling him, and the heat in the atmosphere around us increased. He grabbed my chin roughly with his hand and tilted my head back so he could deepen the kiss. I opened my mouth to him, letting his tongue slide through, letting him explore every inch of his mouth. I jeweled with him, my tongue meeting his. It was as though we were fighting and dancing at the same time. We knew the steps. Every move he made, I met with the same passion. I couldn't remember the last time I had been kissed like this. I didn't want it to stop. Heat spread across my body like wildfire. My pelvis started to throb even harder with insistent desire. And to think this was just a kiss. What would happen if things became more intimate between us? I shuddered, not sure I wanted to find out. I was worried once things started, they couldn't be stopped. I worried if we weren't stopped, I would have the best sex of my life. And if that were to happen, I'd be ruined for everyone else. If I didn't move forward, if I never experienced it, there would be nothing to regret. There would be nothing to compare any future love to. He gripped my tank and broke our kiss. I put my arms up and he pulled my top up and threw it away. You can still stop him, I thought. You can still stop yourself. But I didn't want to. Too many conflicting emotions, not enough time to think through them. My dragon wanted to come out, and I wasn't going to stop her. Let her have her fun. After everything she had endured, she deserved it. Logan glanced down at my body, sucking in a tight breath. Damn, you're beautiful. He dipped his head and I arched up into his mouth, throwing my head back. My hand gripped the back of his head, fingers burying themselves in his dark locks. Oh God. I needed him so much. It had been so long since I had been touched that a show of intimacy from him set my entire body aflame. I was weak. I was desperate. I was pathetic. I didn't care. Not when it felt like this. His strength was fantastic. I was not small by anyone's stretch of imagination, and he held me with ease. I appreciated that he was still careful with me, like he didn't want to hold too tight because he didn't want to hurt me. Where can we go? he asked, his mouth trailing up my neck until it reached just under my ear. I extended my arm out, desperation clawing at my belly. My bedroom. That way. My back crashed into a wall and I grunted. His mouth dropped to my collarbone, his teeth nipping at my skin. I wouldn't be surprised if he left marks. I wouldn't hate it if he did. He continued down the hallway, nearly falling into the other side of the wall. Luckily, he caught himself before he did. We stumbled into the bedroom. He tripped over his own footing, and we fell onto my bed with him on top of me. We both grunted before he found my lips again, pressing his body into mine. The mattress was soft beneath my back and I clung to his head. He glanced up at me and his iris flashed to dragon. My body sparked with longing. I bit my lip. I didn't know what my eyes looked like, but I knew my dragon was breathing fire within me. I was surprised smoke wasn't coming out of my nose. Everything was alight. My body thrummed. My nerves were so sensitive just touching me was painful, but the kind of pain that made me crave more. I wanted him to touch every part of me. 
places I never thought could elicit a sensual response like the tip of my nose, my knees, everywhere. The shifters inside wanted this man to devour me, light me up and fill me. I needed to feel him. I needed him to claim me. I wanted him more than I'd realized, more than I thought I could want anyone else. I wanted him. That last thought had me sobering, until he pulled my knickers from me with one single tug. I've been waiting to do this since the second you tried to kick my ass in the alley earlier, he said. Had it only been a few hours since we first met each other? I felt like I had known him forever. Oh, I kicked your ass, sir, I said as he leaned to the side. And you liked it. You liked being challenged. You definitely kept me on my toes, that's for sure, he admitted as he slowly pushed inside of me. Any smart retort died on my lips as my eyes rolled to the back of my head and my legs spread further apart in order to give him as much space as he needed. Later I lay sprawled over his massive chest, the only sounds in the room are shared ragged breathing. At least I wasn't the only one affected by what had happened. At least someone as masculine and vital as Logan could be reduced to gasping breaths and twitching muscles. I blinked rapidly so the unshed tears would not fall. I did not want to be that woman. I did not want to be cheesy or ridiculous or romantic. I did not want him to think I was sentimental. We barely knew each other. Sure, we were both hybrids. We survived an intense physical battle with a ferocious shifter pack who wanted to eradicate our type. But that didn't mean we were destined to be together, even if maybe we were. Logan didn't know this. Logan didn't need to know this, considering he was more than likely going to leave. And I refused to beg him to stay. What was I going to do now? How was I going to survive knowing my mate, the person I was destined to be with, when he left? Chapter 7 Logan The sun lifted over the forest and the rays spilled into the dark room. For a moment, I forgot where I was. I was comfortable. I didn't want to wake up. And I was with someone. Her. Molly's unique scent tickled my nose with sweetness. My mouth began to salivate. I wanted her again. I'd never believed in perfection until I had been inside of her, and then I'd felt it. My eyes snapped open. I took in the darkness still fighting for dominance, even though the light from outside trickled in. I didn't want to be attached to her. Hell, I didn't want to be attached to anyone. There was a reason I wasn't part of a pack. There was a reason I didn't have a girlfriend, and I didn't go out of my way to find lovers. The last thing I wanted was someone who clung to me, who needed me, depended on me, who took away my freedom. And yet I couldn't imagine not being around her. She must have been some kind of a witch who put me under her spell, because I didn't understand this change in feelings for her. I wanted to deny it. I wanted to pretend I felt nothing, and my plan to leave was still going to be seamless. But I couldn't. The desire to leave of course was there. But it wasn't going to be easy. And there was a chance it wasn't going to be right away. All because of her. I looked down upon the woman lying next to me. I reached out and trailed my fingertip down her spine. Her body tensed, goosebumps springing up wherever I touched her. She still did not wake up. I envied her. I still wanted to be deep in slumber, my body reeling from what happened, wanting more and begging for rest simultaneously. Sleep teased me. I closed my eyes, wanting to drift back away, back into that rest that rejuvenated me. Last night had been different than anything I'd ever experienced. This morning was different still. Would I be able to return to the way I used to be? Instead of pulling away from Molly and running from the room as I should, have my shifters settled inside me. It felt as though they were curled up and sleeping, completely content with everything that had transpired between us and Molly. They weren't scared. They weren't trying to protect us. If anything, they dragged me down into their bliss-filled state. It was easy to succumb. She lay next to me, breathing softly. She sounded like a lullaby, and my eyelids started to close once more. Her dark hair spilled over her face, and I resisted the urge to brush it away. 
I glanced up at the white ceiling, loosing a breath. Fuck. What have I gotten myself into here? I had to go. I couldn't stay. Who was I kidding? I hated that I was unsure. I hated that Molly reduced me to doubt and worry, and questions, that forced me to reconsider my entire plan for life. If I didn't leave now, it would only get worse. I would get sucked so far in, that the option of leaving would be impossible. It was now or never. I lifted the blankets that had kept me warm all night, and without disturbing her, crawled out of bed. As I crept from her bedroom, my heart sunk into my stomach like an anchor in the ocean. I ignored the feeling, though my chest squeezed with pain. I still had no idea what clothes I could wear. Maybe if I shifted into a wolf, I could run most of the way home. Or perhaps there would be a guy my size in one of the other houses in this odd pack that I could borrow from. Doubtful, but if there was anyone who could clothe me, it would be someone here. God, I was pathetic. I was so desperate to leave, I was willing to steal clothes from a stranger just to get away. I wouldn't even consider taking her brother's clothes though. Not after what she shared with me last night. I had no problem stealing from anyone else but not her. Never her. Squeak. I froze. I cursed the loose floorboard for outing my escape and waited for Molly to stir. I began to prepare myself for her to emerge from her bedroom, draped in a sheet, disappointment in her eyes. God, if she looked at me that way, I wouldn't be able to go. My ears pricked up but I couldn't hear a thing, luckily. I released a breath I hadn't realized I had been holding. Something needled the base of my spine, but I couldn't put a finger to what it was. Disappointment. Maybe. Why would I be disappointed she hadn't caught me? It wasn't like I wanted to stay. Before I let myself get sucked down that road, I forced myself to glance around the room. I could fly away as my dragon, but that shifter was volatile and my least favorite. I also wasn't used to shifting into him, and I didn't want to attempt it here. A squeaky floorboard might not give me away, but a roaring dragon with fire curling from his nostrils certainly would. I never felt as in control when I was a dragon, compared to my human self or even my wolf. Perhaps I could run through the woods, towards home, and hope that there weren't any hunters around. It was a risk. My eyes found Molly's bedroom. But so was staying here. I angled my body towards the front door, but kept my eyes on her bedroom. My gut tightened, and more unusual feelings swamped me. My feet turned into cement. Guilt. I clenched my jaw. I thought I had successfully removed the emotion from my mind. Why did I keep coming back to it? I knew I shouldn't be leaving. Especially not after the incredible sex we'd shared. Especially not when even I could admit I felt things for Molly I had never felt before, and it didn't make sense to me, because this was coming from maybe 12 hours of knowing her. This wasn't my home though. I didn't want to stay. I couldn't stay. I wasn't a pack man. I'd never had a pack mentality. Not after growing up in the foster system among homelessness, pedophiles, and abuse. And just because Molly was amazing and our connection was off the charts, I wasn't going to change who I was because of her. More than that, I refused to put myself and her in a position where I unintentionally hurt her. Hell, I was already doing it now, running away early in the morning without even saying goodbye. I could keep my own goddamn dragon trapped for a decade, but I couldn't find it in myself to say goodbye. Pathetic. Maybe this would teach her a valuable lesson. Maybe now she would realize that I wasn't going to change her mind, that depending on me was probably the stupidest thing she could do. Counting on people got you hurt. Killed even. I was better off on my own. And she was better off without me. My mouth was dry. Sex last night had made me parched. A jug of water sat on the kitchen counter. I crossed to it and drank the whole content. I was pretty hungry too, but I wouldn't go through her fridge like I was some starving kid, desperate for anything to put in his stomach. I'd had enough of living like that as a teenager. I could wait to eat until I got home. 
Plus, eating here would just waste time and give her more of an opportunity to see me leaving, to stop me. I couldn't take that chance. I knew, deep down, I wouldn't be able to leave then. No more. I'd rather go hungry. And yet, you have found every excuse to linger. I ignored the voice in my head, even though it was right. Had I really needed the water? I stepped towards the front door, clenching my teeth and readying my soul. I was going. And no one was stopping me. One step, and then another. Everything inside of me screamed to go back, but I couldn't. I wouldn't let myself. I kept walking until I reached the door. I placed my hand on the knob. Hey. I froze at the sound of Molly's voice and turned to see her standing in the doorway of her room. God she looked beautiful. Messy dark hair. An oversized t-shirt showing off her long legs. No makeup. She was the definition of perfection. She raised an eyebrow. You going somewhere? I nodded and swallowed against the uncomfortable feeling rising in my throat. If I was going to leave, I would tell it to her face. No more running away with my tail between my legs. No more being a goddamn coward. Yeah, I thought I better head off. Get home. See what's left of my house. My finger tapped on the aluminium of the knob. The cool material helped me focus on the outside of the house, where the temperature was cold. It reminded me that I couldn't crawl back into bed with her despite the fact that I wanted to, despite the fact that it was warm and cozy and inviting. She gestured to my undressed state. You're going to leave like this? A grim smile tugged at my lips. Relief bubbled in my chest. I thought for sure she was going to lecture me, or get angry at me leaving her without saying anything. Instead, she was trying to ease the tension between us. I appreciated the effort. I was going to leave in your brother's clothing you gave me last night, but after everything you told me, I didn't feel right about doing that, I said. She smiled. I appreciate the thought, but I'm sure he'd be thankful someone's actually using them instead of leaving them to waste. Honestly, he'd probably kill me if he knew I still had them instead of donating them. She shook her head, coming out of another memory and looking back at me. But I can't loan you a car or anything. And we're in Vermont by the way. She looked sheepish. I stared at her, eyes widening. You flew me interstate. She shrugged. Yeah, of course I did, she rubbed her lips together. Look, mind if I give you some advice? I know you didn't ask for it, and I don't want to come across like I'm telling you what to do, but I do want to help. Then, without waiting for me to answer, she continued. Your best bet is shifting into your dragon form and flying home. Fly above the cloud cover, and try and be as inconspicuous as possible when you land. The last thing anyone needs is to claim they've seen a dragon. Sure, news outlets will treat the guy like he's crazy, but if a pack hears of the sighting, they'll take it seriously. It would take too long to walk home, even if I were to clothe you, and even being a wolf might alert other packs to your presence. Dragon would be my choice. I nodded. That sounded like good advice. Okay, well? I ran out of words. I had no idea what to say. Thank you for finding me first. For saving my life and showing me the best night of my life. Molly didn't say anything, but just stared at me. I? I tried again. I couldn't be this inept. Was I stalling? Was I making this more difficult than it needed to be, because I didn't want this to happen at all? She smiled and a chuckle left her lips. It's okay, she said, her voice soft, nodding towards the door. I know you have to go. Just promise me something, okay? Be careful. The soul wolves won't leave you alone. They think we're some sort of abomination that has to be wiped off the face of the earth, and they won't stop until they succeed. So I suggest selling your house and moving on. Or at least investing in some pretty mean weaponry. They already have your scent. I highly doubt they're going to lose it anytime soon. I laughed. I'd never worried about buying a gun, or needing anything more than my shifting powers to protect myself. I knew how to fight, and now that I knew people were looking for me, 
I'd be better prepared next time. Thanks, I said. She leaned her head against the doorframe, looking sweet and sexy as hell. There were still sleepers in her eyes, and she stifled a yawn with the back of her hand. I had the sudden urge to pull her into my arms and bury my face in her neck, to forget that I should leave and just choose not to. I was surprised by the urgency of this feeling, but I forced it down, just like I pushed down the guilt. Just remember, she said as she pulled her hair over her left shoulder, you always have a place here, Logan. That isn't going to change. I nodded, blocking out anything like remorse or pain, but I couldn't say anything. Keeping quiet was safer. Keeping quiet meant I didn't have to think of the right words. Keeping quiet didn't give me the opportunity to tell her the truth. That I felt something for her. That while I should leave, there was a small part of me that was tempted to stay. This was the right thing to do though, I reminded myself. My body seemed to say otherwise. My body was comfortable here. My body wanted to stay. I cleared my throat. Unfortunately for my body, it didn't have a say. I didn't belong here. I had to leave. I forced myself to walk out the door, all but ripping it off its hinges, and stepped onto the dirt out the front of Molly's house. I tilted my face up, breathing in the crisp, clear air. My lungs expanded. My body relaxed. It was peaceful here. Clean. I really could get used to this. I could get used to being with her. Which meant I had to leave now. It had been a long time since I'd allowed my dragon to take over my body. I couldn't control him the way I could control my wolf. A wolf body was easier to move around with, and it was much less noticeable than it would have been if I breathed fire and flew around as a means of transportation. I didn't like to think about it much, but part of me was afraid of what would happen if I was my dragon for too long a time. I didn't trust myself. However, there was no other feasible way for me to get home. I couldn't head back on foot, and seeing as the house was on fire and I was half dead when we'd left, I hadn't had the foresight to grab my wallet, so it wasn't like I could pay someone to drive me. I kept thinking about what would happen if I just let my wolf take over, but the pack from before invaded my head. As much as I wanted to believe I could take them, deep down I knew that wasn't possible. A handful of them had nearly killed me. If Molly hadn't saved me. No. I stopped myself from thinking anything more about that. Instead I closed my eyes and let my dragon rise. My senses tingled. A strange pleasurable shiver slid down my spine. My heart soared and something whipped out, snapping the air the way a sail unfurled in the breeze. Judging by the relief pulsing through me, it was my wings. Wow. I didn't realize how badly I needed to let my wings out. I tilted my head, stretching out one side of the neck, before doing the same thing to the other side. I let out a groan. A snarl came out of me instead. Red scales covered my skin. My legs stretched and grew thicker. My arms surged forward, sharp claws replacing my fingernails. A thump sounded behind me, and I glanced back, only to take in my long spiked tail. I reached out with my wings, as far as they would go, feeling my way through this part. My dragon body was huge and uncomfortable. I stomped once, twice. The ground rumbled beneath me, but Molly remained firm on her feet. Molly, the woman I was trying to ignore. Trying to forget about. I beat the air with my wings, getting used to the movement required. For a moment, I worried I wouldn't be able to carry myself the whole way, due to my sheer size. However slowly, I began to lift myself up until I was in the air. My wings increased their speed and kept steady. I hung there for a moment, getting used to the sensation of being weightless. My stomach tumbled the way it did when I was on an elevator, and it began to descend. I turned to look at Molly one last time. I shouldn't have, but I also couldn't help it. I needed to see her. I wanted to remember her, even if I couldn't be with her. She leaned against her doorframe, hair in her face, arms crossed over her chest. My eyes lingered on her legs, and for the briefest of seconds, I was tempted to go back to her, to forget ever contemplating leaving in the first place. But I didn't. Instead, I forced myself to fly higher. 
I needed to get away. Away from Molly and the pack of hybrids who'd tracked me because it was important to them that I knew about them, that I knew I was welcomed in their home. Away from a life I could have had if only I wasn't so damn stubborn. Chapter 8 Molly As I leaned on the frame of my door, I tucked the corner of the sheet in so I could cross my arms over my chest without worrying the sheet would fall. Although maybe if I let it, it might urge him to come back. I was too sensitive right now to try and then get rejected. Instead I watched him as a magnificent dragon fly far away from me, with no way of getting him to choose to stay, his brilliant red scales flashed under the rising sun, and I could not keep my jaw from dropping slightly. So beautiful. He flew towards the puffy white clouds like he was part of an elaborate illustration that was paired with a child's fairy tale. My heart lurched in my chest and tears stung my eyes. I let my gaze linger on him until he disappeared into the distance. My heart squeezed painfully. With a heavy sigh, I pushed the pain away and turned back inside, dashing away the tears on my face. I scoffed at my emotional state. It had been one night. Why was I so devastated? Because he's just like me. And I finally felt safe, accepted, needed, and because I know he's supposed to be my mate. I growled and tore off my sheet as I stormed into my living room. I was being ridiculous. First, why had I thought I could change him? That he'd accept my help and want to stay? Stupid Molly. I grabbed a bra and some underwear from the laundry I had yet to put away, disturbing the neat piles I'd created a couple of days ago. Why had I thought one night of sex, where he asked how it was possible for this to feel so perfect, would compel him in any way to want to forego his carefully crafted bubble of isolation and make a life for himself where he could be around other human beings? More than that, where he could find a place among other hybrid shifters, shifters who were just like him, who thought and felt and dealt with the same things he did. I whipped out a plain red shirt from underneath a second pile, I would pick them up later. I was too frazzled to do anything other than stomp around the length of my living room until I felt better. No. Fuck that. I wouldn't let Logan ruin my day. I walked to the front door, only remembering I didn't have pants on, when I opened the door and felt the cool breeze on my bare legs. I turned back around, slamming the door behind me. I was too angry to be embarrassed. I moved towards the kitchen. It's okay, Molly. You found him. You saved his life. You did a great job with what you had in front of you. And even if you never see him again, you had the best sex of your life. Think about that for a moment. Some people have mediocre sex for their whole lives. You're one of the lucky ones. The attempt at lifting my spirits was an abysmal failure. I tried something physical. I smiled. Studies said that if you smiled, the feelings of happiness would follow. However, I couldn't even do something as simple as conjuring a smile. At least, I didn't need to put on a happy face. There was no one around to see me. No one I had to pretend in front of. I could be sad. I could cry. I could take the clean clothes that littered my floor and throw them around and roar and stomp and hit and whatever else I wanted to do that would make me feel even a little bit better. I looked at my couch, suddenly very tired. I had been up all night, having fun and talking to Logan. It was the best night of my life. And now it was over. Now I wanted to sleep. I plopped down, resting my head behind me, my face tilted up to the ceiling. I closed my eyes, loosing a sigh through my nose. The front door of my cabin burst open. I sprung up. I didn't know if I had been asleep for a second or an hour. Molly. Toby, one of my hybrid shifter packmates, stood in the doorway. His big brown eyes were wide, his skin pale. My body tensed. Quick, you've gotta come, he jerked his hand toward the door. We're under attack. He turned and bolted. I didn't even think twice. I just ran out the door after him. I wondered if he would decide to let his wolf out or if he would take ownership of his bear. Both were vicious. The wolf was fast but the bear had raw strength. 
I suppose it depended on what was attacking us. Upon stepping out of the house, I was met with the smell of flames. Soot tickled my nose. Wood splintered behind me. I realized with sudden horror that they were burning our homes, forcing us out into the open. They wanted us defenseless. They wanted to make sure that there was nowhere for us to turn. Nowhere for us to run. Fury surged through me. I let out a roar before I could stop myself. This was our home. And they wanted to take it from us? There was no way I was going to let that happen. There was no way I was just going to sit back and let them come in and burn us to the ground. Not when I could stop it. We were in the middle of nowhere, hiding, isolated. We didn't want to start any trouble. We weren't harming anyone. We kept to ourselves. We were careful to control our beasts that lived inside of us. And yet the shifter who were attacking us were scared. I smelled fear. They thought that because we were different, we should be feared. Who the hell did they think they were? My fingers coiled into fists. They weren't wrong about one thing, they should be afraid. Chapter 9 Logan The crisp air stung my dragon's eyes as I flew up and up, towards the clouds like Molly had suggested. The sun was only just beginning to rise, so the oranges and yellows splashed across the sky like a painting. It was something I wouldn't mind watching. I thought Molly would enjoy it. Now you're in for it. Really? Is everything going to remind you of her? One night and look how tied together you two are. My heart was heavy as I flew farther away from the woman who had offered me a home. I felt my tail being pulled downwards like there was a chain keeping me from going higher and higher. Not because I was tethered to her home, unable to be free, but because I wanted to go back to her. Leaving felt unnatural, like I was cutting out my heart and dropping it out of the sky. Molly wasn't the first to want me to move in with her, but she was certainly the first to offer me a place where I may actually fit in. Where I might believe in this whole concept of having a real home. Strange noises met my ears and I focused on the sounds. Growls came from the direction I flew from, mingled with cries and whimpers. A few anguished screams punctured the air. Oh God. Something was happening. Something bad. Right below me. Molly's pack was being attacked. I just knew it. In that moment, I thanked God or whatever supernatural force had created me. Before, I always thought these monsters inside of me had been my burden to bear, a curse I would have to live with in isolation for the rest of my life. Now though, I realized that I had been looking at everything wrong. These abilities I had weren't curses. If I didn't have them at all, I wouldn't have been able to hear the commotion below me. I turned and swooped down. I felt like I was falling, but I was completely in control of my descent. My tail skimmed the top of the trees I'd left moments ago. My nostrils flared. The strong scent of sulfur surrounded me. At first, I thought it was a result of my own dragon, considering sulfur was a natural scent and lingered whenever I had shifted. But it wasn't my particular scent. Flames cackled below me, the same strong hues of the sunlight I'd appreciated just a moment ago. Now though, the colors look terrifying and hungry. I landed in an empty field with slight hesitation. I had never flown before. Neither had I landed. As such, I needed to keep steady or I was going to topple over. I stumbled forward, my paw prints stamped into the grass beneath my feet. Behind me, the heat of a nearby fire flamed. Up ahead, the clash of battle sounded. Of animals fighting. Of people screaming. The soul shifters were here, and judging by the number regrouped and added more people to their army. With Molly as a dragon, they were not able to beat her because wolves while fast did not have the strength. But perhaps the number of wolves they had now could overpower a dragon. I hoped they hadn't expected me and my shifter. Two dragons were significantly stronger than one. I ran forward, each step causing the ground underneath me to tremor like a small earthquake. The leaves of the trees rustled together. Whether they were singing me praises or alerting the soul shifters to my presence, I wasn't sure. 
I spread my wings until the gentle breeze caught them and lifted me into the sky once again. My intention was to get around the first two houses and intercept whoever was there. I turned sharply, but couldn't predict how much force my body possessed. I nearly tossed myself into a thicket of trees. Luckily, I caught myself just in time, only to find a pack of wolves attacking a bear behind me. The bear was the hybrid. I could tell by the strange glimmer in his eyes, the fluidity of the movement. There was something brutal, something above being animalistic. I felt this at my lowest, most uncontrollable times. I ran forward and snapped my jaws at the wolves. I sunk my fangs into the juicy thigh of one wolf who happened to be clinging to the bear's leg with his own set of teeth and tossed him into the forest. There was a loud thump and then a whimper. I didn't think I'd have to worry about him getting up any time soon. I didn't waste any time. Another wolf clung to the bear's back, trying to bite his neck. He wasn't getting any traction because the bear's neck was so thick, and the bear kept moving left and right, trying to keep the wolf from biting him. I was surprised by the quick thinking of the bear. If I were in that position, I would be trying to toss him off me, everything and everyone else be damned. He knew he had two wolves, so he couldn't turn his back or else he'd be left vulnerable. I shifted my attention to the second wolf. If I took this one, the bear could get the other wolf off his back. I lunged, dropping my jaw so I could grab onto him. The strong scent of metal invaded my senses. My sharp fangs tore through skin and muscle as I closed my mouth. The wolf yelped, and my ears rang for a fraction of a second. I snapped his bones and tossed him in the direction of the fire. Under normal circumstances, I would have been afraid of the power coursing through my body. Another reason why I didn't like to shift into my dragon was the sheer power it offered. My scales protected me from an attack while my feet crushed people and my fangs tore through skin the way a human's teeth tore through cheese. Not today. Today I embraced chaos. I welcomed the alpha dragon. I would help these hybrids who meant nothing to me. Today, I would defend those who couldn't defend themselves. The bear growled and slammed into a thick nearby tree. The wolf whimpered and retreated. The bear sagged back down to all fours and released a heavy breath. He caught my eye and nodded at me once. I didn't need the thanks, but I respected it. I nodded back and watched as he limped away. I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to find out what was going on and ask where Molly was and ask if she was okay. I wanted to help. I galloped in the direction of the roaring and hissing. I wanted to focus on finding Molly. To make sure she was safe. But other hybrids needed me. And I wasn't going to let them down. We were in this together. Among the wolves there was also a fox, a cheetah, and a lion. Each had the strange glimmer in their eyes, what I was beginning to realize was the telltale sign of being a hybrid. I didn't know who the hybrids were, but it didn't matter. They were me. They were my kind, and I was going to be there for them in whatever way I could. I would fight until I died if I needed to. I charged, the ground underneath my feet shaking. The closer I got, the more unbalanced the wolves became. A couple of them lost their footing. I jumped on top of two black ones, crushing them with my weight. Bones crunched underneath me. They didn't even let out a cry of pain. I needed to act quickly. I didn't like using my fire breathing skills. I was out of practice. The last thing I needed was to choke on a fireball or to lose control and then burn someone I cared about. But I needed to act quickly. The wolves were fierce and the hybrids were injured. I didn't think the fox could last much longer, despite the fact that he was with a formidable cheetah and a ferocious lion. They wouldn't be able to help me in a fair fight, but I could help them. I inhaled sharply and opened my mouth. Embers burned my throat. But I couldn't release it, just yet. I was going to burn myself. Smoke trickled out of my nostrils. The ball of flame slowly pushed up my throat until I could feel it heating the back of my fangs. I unhinged my jaw, pointed my nose at the wolves, and let out a roar. They howled crying in pain and turned. Those that weren't terribly injured managed to scamper off. 
I smelled the freshly burnt scent of skin on my nose. My stomach churned with guilt, but I shook my head. Unfortunately, in battles such as this one, it was kill or be killed. A bellowing sound filled the air. It was strange, almost like everything happened in slow motion. Birds flew from the trees. I was surprised some had still clung on during the battle. I looked up. A sharp cry roared above everything else, with such force it directed plumes of smoke in different directions. I had never heard a dragon roar in pain before. And yet the second I heard it, I knew exactly what it was. It was such a strange sensation, I didn't have any time to analyze. Molly was in trouble. I had to get to her. Now. I hopped over a small wooden cottage, flying in the direction of the sound. My ears were much larger as a dragon, but my hearing was not as good as I hoped it would be. I landed in a spray of fire and scales, shaking the ground underneath me, whipping my tail around and knocking down a couple of trees. There were dragons everywhere. A dozen of them, of different colors and sizes. I dropped my mouth open, steadying myself. I had never seen this many dragons in one cluster together. If I didn't have to focus on the fact that this was a fight to the death, I would have given myself a moment to step back and take it all in. This was beautiful. I was almost angry at myself for how cheesy that sounded, but I didn't care. My heart burst. I didn't know what seeing other dragons would mean to me, how it would make me feel, but I suddenly felt at home. The thought of someone hurting these dragons made me angrier than I ever thought I could be. My body shook. My scales vibrated. My temples popped as I clenched my teeth. I stood up as big as I could get, and tucked my wings into my sides so they didn't get hurt. I was the largest dragon by far. I wasn't sure why. I wasn't sure the science and biology about being a hybrid. I guess it didn't matter. The other dragons turned to look at me. There was awe in their eyes, and maybe a little suspicion. A couple stepped back, as though they were parting so I could see something. No, not something. Someone. Molly. And she looked hurt. I didn't know how it was possible, but the wolves had managed to find the sensitive skin between her scales. Maybe she had been injured before, or maybe they had ripped off a few of her scales to get to her skin. But near her ribs, just under her breast, there was a gaping hole, with dark crimson blood seeping out of it. I narrowed my gaze. She hadn't even noticed me. Her eyes were at half-mast. Her breathing was shallow. She wasn't getting up, despite the danger that surrounded us. From my peripheral, I saw the other dragons close around us again, offering us a barrier of protection as they engaged the wolf pack enemy. I heard snarling and roaring, but it sounded far away, like I was underwater. I was glad to have the chance to relax. For some strange reason, I trusted these dragons. They would not allow any harm to come to us. I didn't know how I knew that. Hell, I wasn't sure why I was able to trust them in the first place. I blew out a breath and stepped closer to Molly. The wound looked worse than I'd realized. I leaned down and pressed my head against her stomach, trying to see if there were any other wounds, like cracked ribs or internal bruising. She made a noise and it sounded like she was in pain. This wasn't good. I wasn't sure if this was a life-altering wound, if she would actually die from it, or what. But I was angry she had sustained it, nonetheless. What was the point? Why try to kill her when she kept to herself? When all the hybrids did? Because she dared to exist? She couldn't help how she was born. She couldn't change it, even if she wanted to. Hell I wanted to, and I couldn't seem to fix myself. If I had the option, I would rip out my monsters and be a human being. But I couldn't. I was what I was. Molly helped me understand that there was nothing wrong with being this way. She reminded me that I didn't need to dull my beasts with alcohol to the point of numbness, rather, I should embrace every facet of myself. And now there was a chance she could die, all because some soul shifters were threatened by the fact that there were others out there who weren't quite like them. A dragon flew behind me and charged, knocking into me. I realized at this moment that these dragons weren't hybrids, they were soul shifters. 
I cursed at my stupidity. In my haste to get to Molly, I didn't look into their eyes to confirm whether they were friend or foe. Anger, unlike anything I'd ever felt, rushed through me. I whipped around in order to face the fighting. My tail nearly smashed Molly's body, but I made sure to control it, now that I was getting used to being a dragon. I narrowed my eyes. My breathing came out in quick bursts. My nails sunk into the grass, like I was digging up something. I took in another breath. I felt the click of fire inside my throat. Because I was getting used to breathing fire, the flames came to me more quickly. Good. I opened my mouth and unleashed my fury. The dragons around me roared and clawed at the flames, some flying up and away. Another charged at me, snapping his jaws. I jumped back on my hind legs and slashed at the other dragon with my claws. I wondered why they allowed me a moment to examine Molly, where they didn't attack me. I realized it was because they wanted me to see that dragons like me could still be wounded, that hybrid dragons could be taken out. More than that, I wouldn't be surprised if they got some sick thrill at having the power to see me upset, to see me squirm. I would make them pay for what they did to Molly. A large purple-tipped dragon went for Molly, weaseling around behind me. I roared. He was going to attack someone who couldn't fight back? Molly was barely moving, her wings torn. From this angle, I saw a huge gash in her neck spilling out blood. She wasn't going to last much longer if I didn't get her help. I needed some way to unleash this anger, this agonizing terror that something might happen to Molly and I wouldn't be able to stop it. I wouldn't be able to care for her the way she cared for me. Stop this thinking. I will not let them kill her. She was not an abomination. None of us were. And I would show them. We were just as powerful as they were, if not more so. And they were threatened, because of our potential. I blew fire as I ran forward, feeling the searing heat on my scales. I didn't care. Let the flames consume me entirely. As long as I took these dragons down with me, as long as Molly was safe, I didn't care about any of it. I charged for the purple-tipped dragon. He tried to dodge my attack by stepping to the side. Unfortunately for him, because I was much bigger, it didn't require much effort on my part to change direction. I took advantage of his stumble and opened my mouth. I tore into his flesh with my teeth and ripped out his throat in a similar way that Molly had been attacked. Except unlike Molly's attack, I pressed my teeth down until I heard a snap. The dragon went limp. I spat out his throat like bad beer and turned to face the other dragons. There were three left and I had a feeling I could take them on. I wasn't afraid to, at least. The other dragons began to retreat. I nearly laughed. Why wasn't I surprised? At the end of the day, they were cowards. I blew fire through the air. I managed to catch their tails. Some let out roars of pain. The others clenched their teeth to keep from emitting a sound. They each started to gallop and spread their wings, catching the wind and taking flight. For a moment, I contemplated chasing them. I could catch them by their tails easily. Flying came naturally to me already, and I was looking forward to any excuse to fly again. But I stopped myself. This fight wasn't about me. This fight was about us, about hybrids. Men and women came running from every which way, naked shifters in human form. Molly, who must have felt the change in energy and realized she was safe again, shifted back to human too. But she wasn't okay. I had to concentrate to make my dragon retreat back inside myself. He wanted to stay out, to protect the people of this pack that were vulnerable to attack. I understood his reticence. I hadn't allowed him to come out and play for a very long time. But I promised him that he could come out again, as soon as he liked. I wouldn't stop the shift if it happened tomorrow, or the next day. Molly had been right. I needed to learn to accept my shifting animals, so I could use them when needed. Control them. I wasn't afraid of what would happen if I let them out to play anymore. Eventually, the dragon gave me back my body. I came back to my human self, my heart hammering in my chest and my lungs burning from the effort it took to make those flames. 
Two men scooped up Molly and started to carry her off, her bleeding body a mess to behold. I'll take her. I said. Brooking no argument, I took her from them. She didn't open her eyes and barely moved. I looked straight at one of the many naked shifters and said, Which way? We need to get her patched up. A woman tapped me on the shoulder and led me into a house where the pack rallied together to save someone they desperately cared about. Chapter 10 Molly Blinking hurt Shifting an inch in bed hurt Everything hurt I pried my eyes open and welcomed the sun, though it glared in my face until I adjusted to the brightness. I swallowed the lump in my throat, made hard by the thickness of my tongue and the dryness of my mouth. Someone cleared their throat and my gaze shot to the side of my bed where Logan sat, dressed in a black t-shirt and jeans. Here you go. He handed me a glass of water, and I lifted my arm to take it. I was covered in bandages. On my arms, my legs. I could feel them wrapped around practically every inch of me. Thanks, I said voice hoarse. What happened? I tried to remember what had transpired that could have caused this, but couldn't. Was there a fire? A fight? I struggled to sit up and then took a sip of water. Then another. My body hummed with happiness and I swallowed the whole lot down. I peered up at him again. Why did you come back? He filled up the empty glass with a pitcher on the nightstand and handed it back to me. Well, I heard your pack get attacked and came back to help. I sipped slower on the water this time. My lips were cracked and dry. How long have I been out? I asked. He smiled gently. About two days. Damn, that was a long time to heal. How was I injured? He nodded. Yeah, a flock of dragons, or whatever you want to call them. I couldn't help laughing. A group of dragons is called a few different things, but I always liked a thunder of dragons because the beat of our wings when we fly together makes a similar noise to thunder. But flock works too. With a smile, I waited for him to continue. He slid back in the chair and casually leaned on the headrest. Yeah, you were injured. They tried to kill you and did a pretty good job of messing up your wings and your chest. But we got to you in time. Some of the girls, Nadia and Stephanie, patched you up, and I've been waiting here for you to wake up. Nadia and Stephanie, huh? So he knew their names? You're settling in now, Logan? I asked, putting a teasing tone into my voice, although it was the last thing I wanted to joke about. Well, I couldn't leave, not after you scared me half to death by almost dying. I nodded, but tried not to say anything more. If he wanted to stay, he should be able to say it. Sorry, I said with a little shrug. Yeah, well, I'm glad you pulled through, Molly. You've got one hell of a fighting spirit. I smiled, touched by the compliment. It's the dragon in me. We heal better than almost any other shifter. Speaking of which, who attacked us? Do you know? He nodded. Yeah. It was a pack of wolf shifters and a thunder of dragons. Pretty much set on taking out everyone here. I inhaled sharply. Is everyone okay? We weren't prepared for an attack of that magnitude. Yeah. You were the most injured. Some of the guys have been in contact with the wolf pack that attacked, the soul shifters. They're trying to come to an agreement to stop the attacks. The dragons are being more stubborn, but now that you're awake, we can work on a solution with them as well. I set the glass down. I'm glad things are moving in the right direction. I want my pack to be safe, but I'm more concerned about you right now. Different emotions flickered across his face. Why would you be worried about me? Well, I don't know how you're feeling about us now. If you feel the same way about leaving as you did before. His lips curled up a little on the ends. I know I said that I didn't fit in, but after what I saw a few days ago, I think I need to stick around in case you need me again. Hope flared in my chest and it was impossible to keep the smile off my face. You want to stay? A smile lit up his face and my stomach tightened with desire. Well, you know, the bed is a bit lumpy. 
We need to do something about that. Do you mean the spare bedroom? Or are you hoping to move into my bed? Despite wanting to be brave, my voice caught in my throat. He leaned forward, reaching for my hand. I gave it to him, and interlinked our fingers. Can you forgive me, Molly? For being chicken shit. For running away when you offered me a home. Why did you do that? I asked. He shrugged. Because I've never been able to rely on anyone but myself. I had no idea why you were helping me, what you'd do if I let you. I don't know. I'm pretty damaged. Are you okay with that? I laughed and lay back against the pillows, still clinging to his hand. We're all damaged around here, but that's what makes our pack so special. I turned to look at him, meeting his dark gaze. What about me? I mean, I can feel the connection to you. The desire to mate, to bond. My dragon's heat calls to you. Do you think, if you stayed, you'd want to be with me? He stood up and sat on the bed with me. You're the only reason I want to stay, Molly. You're fierce and beautiful and so damn loyal. I love that you found me. I love that you offered me a home. I love the fact that our shifters believe we're fated mates. My throat hitched and my stomach turned over. You know about fated mates? He chuckled. Of course I do. When I tried to join a flock of dragons when I was younger, they called me a mistake, an abomination. They said I'd never have a fated mate because there was no one on earth that would be made for me. His eyes shimmered with unshed tears and I reached up and cupped his jaw. You have me. And I'm not going anywhere. Especially since I'm pretty sure we could have made a baby last night. His eyes widened. I squeezed his hand. I didn't want there to be any secrets between us, and I might be wrong, but there's a good chance I'm already pregnant. We had unprotected sex at my high heat time, so if you don't want it, you need to tell me now. He swooped down on me, cupping my face and kissing me so deeply he robbed me of breath. I kissed him until the tears that tingled in my eyes ran down my face. Then he pulled back, a grin on his lips. Are you serious right now? He asked, his tone excited and happy. Yes, of course I am. I scowled a little. Are you happy? Or are you hysterical? He laughed loudly. I'm relieved and so happy. Relieved why? Out of all the reactions I could have imagined Logan giving me after I delivered the news, this wasn't it. Because we could be a real family. With kids and a house and everything I ever wanted as a child. Yes, my love. I pulled him down to lay with me and closed my eyes. Yes, we can. Somehow, I'd managed to find my true mate, and I would spend the rest of my life loving him as he should have been loved. We were finally together. Me and my hybrid alpha. The end. Thank you so much for reading my story. If you like the Alpha Shifter, you will love Fate of the Wolf. Download here. Or for a sneak peek read on for Chapter 1 read on. Book 1 in the Pack Loyalty series.